lovely people for another uh, fun-filled episode of Retail Therapy. It's a show where we just talk about things that make us happy. Hobbies, collecting things, I don't know, freestyle rap battling, just whatever you're into. We're here to talk about it. And today I am joined by my esteemed colleagues, Greg Burke, news editor, no, video editor, head of production, uh, head, of video, head of video production, always out there in the video minds, making our uh, YouTube channels bright and shiny, Greg Burkleton Burke. Happy birthday, by the way, Greg, I know it's belated, but thanks. Uh, you have turned older. Uh, since last we spoke, uh, but you uh, you somehow you somehow maintain that essence of youth, that that childlike wonder. Um, you know, it's the just on the inside forever, right? That's you know, idea. you know, Greg. I, it's like every time I look in your eyes, it's like I just I, I see the inner Greg, loving playing Star Wars, GI Joe. And, uh... I didn't use my yeah. imagination. I did. Yeah. Alright. Um, and then, of course, my other esteemed colleague, uh, uh, man on the street, uh, wide world of electronic sports co-host, <laughs> and just all-around swell fella, Rodney Conyers Jr. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing really well. Very, very excited to, uh, talk some shop to man. I know we all like collecting things like, you know, opened up with, and now we're uh, talking about how it goes down from the feed on up this time, as opposed to the other direction. So very, very excited for this. Nice, man. Yeah, me too. I think it's going to be a fun day. So let's introduce our first guest. Uh, our other guest is en route and should be here very, very soon. But yes, um, the man, the myth, the legend, the one and only Vane David. How are you doing, Vane? How's it going, everybody? Thanks for that intro. Of checks in the mail. <laughs> um yeah man uh so you are like today's theme is sneakers sneaker heads uh you and rod are both avid sneaker collectors um but you love sneakers so much that you you put them on your hot sauce label man uh a yeah little, oh look at you a little bottle of kicks by v right here yeah yep um so, so yeah you're not only a sneaker collector but a uh a hot sauce man yeah, I uh, kind of uh, combined two of my interests and loves into uh, one, I suppose. I got the, the hot honey right here, man. Delicious, flavorful hot honey. That adds a kick to anything. That's what it says on the label. It, it does. Yeah, and you threw, in a, yeah, you threw in a free honeycomb when I got it, so thanks. Yeah, yeah, I did do that with every purchase. Like, you know, a little mini, like, you know, a honey dipper. Why not, you know? Little Put incentive for that from you. Yeah. So today, uh, yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about y'all's collections. We're gonna be diving into like what you know you love about collecting. Uh, what got you into sneakers? I mean, there's there's really no right or wrong place to start or stop. But I'm I, I, let's start with like what what got you into uh, sneaker collecting, Barry? That's a question I cannot answer, quite honestly. Like, you know, a lot of people can go like, oh, I saw this shoe once, and then that's where it began. For me, it's it's always been that way since I was a kid. I've always loved footwear, regardless of what it was. Like, I remember having a picture of, I think, myself when I was, like, one or two, and it's a picture of me trying to chew my, my shoe, like, you know, on my foot, you know, that's on my foot. But, you know... Growing up poor, you know, my mom would bargain bin shop, you know, uh, sneakers and whatnot. And I'd just be happy with a fresh pair of kicks, regardless of what the brand is. You know, and I only got my first pair of name brand sneakers, which is a pair of Jordan 6s, back in 1992, dating myself, because I used my own money. And then it kind of kicked off from there. Man, damn, damn, you must have, what, you must, what were you, like, 11? Like. I'm a lot older than I look. I know I look, I, I know I look like I'm five, but, uh. 
I just turned 44 a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, you're okay. You're a little bit ahead of me. So you were a teenager. <laughs> like, you could probably get a legal job at that point. And, like, I was like, I was 14 when I got my first pair of like Nikes. Um, uh, the Jordan Five was the first pair of shoes that kind of just blew me away when I saw it in stores, just because it looked so unique with the reflective tongue, the the clear outsole. I was like, yo, I want these, but my mom was like, no. So I was obsessed with it. I started drawing the shoe. I was in school in wood shop and I made a pencil holder with the, uh, in the silhouette of the Jordan 5 and you know like you could see where this is heading and then you know being half Chinese the one good thing is like you know when you're single you get red packets so you get money in there so I started saving up my the, all the cash and I uh, ended up buying a, my first pair of sneakers with that. Nice dude. Super dope. Do you, yeah. do you still have them? Do you have that first pair still? No, I don't. I, I beat them to the ground. Like, I wear my shoes. You know, like, uh, at the time, I was a size 9. Okay, full disclosure, I was a size 8. I was a size 8 in men's when I was 8 years old. So oh, I had, wow. I had big-ass Ronald McDonald feet. And I was only, like, 5'3 or something like that, or shorter. So, you know, I was just, like, flopping around like Krusty the Clown. <laughs> um... And then every year it kind of grew like a quarter to a half size bigger and I started freaking out when I when I started hitting like, you know, ten and a half. I'm like, uh, I'm still five, four, five, five. This is not gonna look good. And I'm like a ten and a half and thank goodness it stopped growing and my height started growing after the fact. Like I hit a growth spurt when I was like late fifteen and I'm five ten now. Oh. Phew. There you go. It all, it all, even the human body is an amazing piece of work, ain't it? Thank goodness. <laughs> it would have been bad. That's right. So, um, <coughs> Rod, you mm. are you not only are a huge uh, sneakerhead, you throw a convention. Yeah. Yeah, you do like an annual thing to celebrate mm -hmm. sn the sneaker culture, right? I do, I do. Um, I host what is called the Fake Expo, um, and the origin behind the word fake is actually an acronym. It stands for Fly Ass Kicks Every Day. Oh, and that's dope. Thank you, thank you. What ended up happening was uh, my buddies and I, when I was a lot younger, back before I had bills and stuff to pay, and you had a slightly disposable income because you know you would work your part-time job and get your little $200 check every other week. Um, I would spend a lot of time on Hypebeast.com, and you know the term Hypebeast at that time in like 2009 and 10 was a pretty negative term to use towards people who liked things like sneakers and and streetwear fashion but they turned it into something good on the website so i kind of took that same sort of thinking and created this group uh, what ended up happening after we created the group is uh because facebook had just added the group feature it wasn't always a feature at the beginning of facebook um i just started grabbing as many people as i could and then once i started working at the mall the mall uh you know working customer service and retail especially forces you out of your bubble as a teenager because as a teenager you don't really want to talk to people you're just kind of with yourself and but this forced me to talk to people you know and speak and get their information and so I added them on Facebook and then from there I ended up adding them in, into the group and then um, you know good old Mark Zuckerberg and the algorithm kind of helped out because there weren't very many groups in Omaha Nebraska um, Facebook at the time and so this group started to trend and then from there it just kind of blossomed but what kind of got me into um, you know, very, very similar to very, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of money growing up. You know, I had two parents, you know, four kids. So, you know, my mom and dad are working a lot of jobs to make sure that we can just have something on our feet and on our backs. And um, I think as a kid, sometimes, especially when you like collecting things, you start to realize the differences between yourself and other kids. You know, I think that's just something we all do naturally. And so I'm hanging out with certain kids. I'm like, okay, I do this after school. They do that after school. Oh, I play basketball. I play power forward center. They play more guard, you know, shooting guard, point guard, whatever. And, um, you know, as also, you know, just like in clothes too, I'm noticing the differences in, you know, in footwear. Like, oh, when they play ball, they wear these shoes. But when I play ball, I wear these shoes. And so it was just kind of like a lot of the right ingredients by mistake, you know. Um, and so from there... I just started looking more into like just footwear culture and I started noticing how it's heavily intertwined into music. You know, a lot of my favorite rappers were basketball sneakers uh, and a lot of my favorite athletes wanted to be rappers. So like uh, like Kobe Bryant and, and Shaq, he has a couple albums too, you know, but you know, we start oh, to see the, that crossover. The, what? The infamous Kobe album. 
L-O-V-E-K-O-B-E. Yeah. K-O-B-E. Come on. Kobe, Just... Kobe, Tyra Bell, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so from there, I just uh, I just started collecting. I started looking more into it, and then with working at the mall, that just kind of helped amplify it. But I think the the biggest thing that I love most about collecting sneakers is the same ingredients that goes into a show like Retail Therapy is finding other like minded individuals who like the same things you do. For instance, Blake or, or you know Greg, if I had just met you guys and I looked at your Pokemon card collection, I would look and say, oh, you didn't buy these cards by mistake. These car you purchase these cars on purpose. There's just certain things that you can just tell that other enthusiasts just go out and do. Or like Varian, if I see you with the pair of what the dunks on, I'm like, okay, you know, your parents didn't buy those by mistake. You didn't get those as a gift. You bought those. Like that's just not a you know a random pickup. And so um I just I love that, you know, just like minded people like me. Yeah. Um and Greg, what? I hate I, I mean, you... not, not to derail anything, but can I just give a shout out to that, that you know, Greg's Ghostbusters logo in the back, and the Wolverine poster, you know, behind right there too. Right. <laughs> first, first appearance of Wolverine right there. He fought yeah. the Hulk. I'm pretty sure. And is that a Mars Blackman uh, head, like, to to the right of you? Oh, that, that's that's actually you? that's actually me. But I do have the uh, I have the flip up glasses from a from a different world. Okay. And I, hey, I, 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 yeah, I, Dwayne Wade, yeah, Dwayne Wade, baby, yeah. yeah. I used to wear those a lot. And so, a, a young friend of mine, uh, actually, was funny. He's in the sneaker group too that I made. He, um, he likes sneakers, but he likes creating these sneaker-inspired rugs. And so, uh, when Ooh. I added him to the group, his Dope. business really took off. He said, "Rod, the least I can do is make you a, a rug of your face." So I'm like, "All right, cool." So I just stuck it on the wall. Yo, that's dope. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now Greg's actually in a big Ghostbusters group. But that's a tale for another day. <laughs> uh, he's and we've got a bunch of videos where Greg looks at Ghostbusters toys and collectibles. And he brings that's on awesome. another expert. And he's making an Ecto One right now as well. Oh man, dude, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, but Greg, you I have I had to cancel it. I have no place oh, to no. park the car, so I have to sell it. Oh, Greg. Yeah, there's oh, no place to store it. I'm not gonna pay a hundred dollars a month to have it sit somewhere. You know, it's just wasted money. Uh, so yeah, I have to sell it. Oh no, great. Hundred dollars a month, man. He does not live in the bay, does he? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I think you can put it. I think you can find a make a GoFundMe, Greg. You will get at least ten people to give you ten bucks a month. For Greg, real. I'll give you ten bucks. Like you find nine more people. All right. I'll give you ten bucks. There you Look go. Look at there. Yo, yo, if, if you really get that Ecto one go, I'll give you ten bucks too. Look at that. You are. <laughs> Look at that. Seven people away from mm -hmm. having having the hundred you need, Greg. Very I'm nice. actually, I'm actually really excited about this stuff because I know so little about this. This start this kind of collecting, the kicks and sneaker collecting. Because I mean, I've collected everything: toys, uh, replicas, statues, busts, cards. Like you name it, I've done it. But when I ever look at shoes, and this is an interesting point of conversation. Like, for the people who do want to take them and turn around to sell them for a profit, whether that's Air Jordans or Limited Run, whatever, like, it's got to be much harder, right? Because you have sizes. It's not just, like, one Funko Pop, you know, that's limited to 5,000 pieces. It's, like, it's like a size 9 or a size 10 that's limited to 200 pieces or 100 pieces. Like, how do you go about that in a, in a, collective, in a collectible market that's so, like, varies based on foot size? Do people mm -hmm. actually buy them even if, it, even if it doesn't fit them? Like, is it, is it yes. that kind of a thing? Yeah, hundred percent. Very. I'll, I'll let you take lead on this one, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll chime in as well. I'm honestly the worst person to kind of talk about this, but yes, mm -hmm. uh, um, they, they do. Like you know, people do buy, uh, you know, sizes that they don't fit because they just want that shoe to show off, you know, as a maybe a, a trophy piece or just to say they have it or whatever the case may be. Uh, nowadays, like for for me per se, like I wear my sneakers, so like you know, if I'm getting a a limited edition runs like I, I want to wear it and it makes me feel good you know and then if I'm among like other sneakerheads that know what's up like they, the first thing with sneakerheads they don't look at you they look at your feet and then they, and then they kind of work their way back up right so like if I'm walking on the street and I see somebody with a nice pair of sneakers it doesn't have to be limited edition or, or whatever like you know if I just like a pair of sneakers, I'm like yo nice you know nice kicks it kind of makes that person feel good you know and then you know they might have a better day you know and that's kind of how I kind of live my life but uh with regards to the uh the collecting side of things and selling 
Um, it's weird because like certain sizes go for way more value than others, and it it's kind of baffling. I have noticed that um, like the size 13s and up kind of go for way higher value because it's a it's a lesser run as well. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, you know, like if if you wear size 16s, not not a lot of sneakers in a particular model are made in your size, and that people take advantage of that. Which is really unfortunate too. Like I know two people that wear size 16s, in and I'm like, dude, that, that sucks. Oh, you know, one of them, one of them decided to start making their own sneakers custom mm. because you know, it makes sense. You know, like you know, if you can't buy it for retail and you make your own, like good. And he's he's making some really really nice customs, and, and, and it's amazing. Well, Varian, I hate to cut you off, but. Um I think it's time we introduce uh, our latest guest. Oh, nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it was a oh, he's uh, back on. Oh, there he is. Hello. Can sense Sensor. Oh, yo, yo, what's up? Yeah, I'm just trying to. There we go. Turn on the camera. I, I clicked share screen and said to turn on camera. I'm an idiot. <laughs> no worries. You're here now. Thanks for joining us. I know you just came straight from work, so we really appreciate you. Uh, Oh yeah, no no problem, man. Uh, as Rod said, I, I live like two minutes down the street, so it's nothing. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm already loving this whole thing because he's got one of my favorite movies of all time in the background uh, of his wall. Killing Return of the Joker. Oh, Return of the Joker. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. Shout out. Okay. Like, okay. Awesome. Yeah, we're some big we're some big nerds up in here, man. Welcome. Oh, man. Love it. <laughs> Love so, it. I've got a uh, Jim Lee. Uh, Batman comic autographed, like framed oh, in my uh, my other room. Yes, yes, and I asked him to draw. He'd never drawn the Penguin before. I got an original Jim Lee sketch of the Penguin before he'd ever done the Penguin. Like, oh, God, that's before. awesome! Wow, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah. well, so, Greg, also to um, oh, to answer got, your question, I also got some Batman toys to unbox. Oh, wait, yeah. do you really? Yeah, I think oh, I yeah, we we, we, yeah. we oh, definitely oh, have to do that. Oh, we have man. To do that. Yeah. Oh, I, that's um, for the movie. Yes. Okay. Uh, Spin Masters I I, was nice enough to send me some stuff, so we're gonna take a we're gonna we're gonna break it open today. Okay. Nice. So I don't, I don't have any Batman toys, but but my chair is the Dark Knight Secret Lab. Oh, I oh, see nice. it. Oh, nice. I see it. All right. Well, it sounds like we should just do a, a whole Batman episode <laughs> uh, some other time. <laughs> I'm here for it. Oh man, we can get David Craddock for that one too, I believe. Oh man, I can talk about Jason Todd all day. So I mean, it's I'm I'm ready. All right, you're you're you're, you're the Red Hood. You're the Red Hood main. I'm the Rod Hood man. For, That's for, me. <laughs> <laughs> the Rod Hood. All right, just another uh, aspect that we'll see at Rod Fest 22. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Cosplay. but really quick, um, uh, Greg, to answer your question, yeah, you know, some sizes do go for uh, for more like Varian was saying. And, you know, what's funny is, you know, when I first, I got into sneakers, uh, you know, much later than, than Varian, you know, there's just the gap between us. But I got in around 2009, so about, you know, 14, 15-ish, somewhere in there. And, um, you know, at that time, you know, shoe culture, it's like, people knew people did it. Orders were always coming out. So, George, like, looking at the Michael brand was a good way to... You know, pinpoint if a person wanted to, you know, play ball in these, if they just wanted to collect them as a hobby, or maybe they just wanted to wear the latest shoes, like Varian was saying. But, uh, you know, I think what ended up happening was shoe culture was always this really prominent thing amongst all the collecting hobbies, but it wasn't one that kind of broke into the mainstream market. Uh, and so people weren't really, I mean, people would sell sneakers, but it wasn't as rapid as it is right now. What ended up happening was there was like a sneaker boom um, around like 2011, 12, 13, you know, with, um, you know, LeBron James had a had a pair of uh, was it the South Beach Nines, and then of course Star Game they do a, a limited run of sneakers as well, just for those players that are in it. And you know, Black History Month, and there's a lot of these like sneakers that we were able to grab just all the time. Um, you know, they started to become less and less accessible. And what ended up happening with that is Instagram, I think, is really the biggest you know uh, the biggest reason for that. Instagram took off. These hashtags, people are looking for followers and clicks and interactions. Better way to do it than to, boom, take a picture of your sneak, hashtag it, and then watch the likes and comments kind of fly in. And I think, um, you know, with that happening, people started to kind of shift away from going to, like, sneaker websites and, you know, 
websites like eBay and stuff. I mean, eBay still exists, but people wanted to kind of get that one-to-one -one human connection, like see people wear these shoes on Instagram. And then from there, you know, the shoe game just went completely upside down. But censored. How are you today, man? I've, I know I just seen you about an hour ago, but it's good to see you again. It was a pretty solid day, man. I uh, actually got to talk sneakers uh, with my coworker today. So mm. our, I work at QT, Quick Trip Convenience Store. Uh, they just announced a couple of days ago that they are doing a space for a Quick Trip Air Force One. Mm, what? I, yes, yes. A, a, a customized uh, pair of Air Force Ones as uh, a swip stake. I think they have five pairs, which you know, already had me like, dang, you know, just can't count me out of getting those. But then even more so to count me out, um, they are not letting employees into the raffle. And I'm like, wow, I'm, wow, I'm wow, kind of wow. upset. Because I'm like, I, I got a picture of the, the shoe right here. But I That's feel crazy. like if anyone should have the opportunity to get this, then it should be me. I'm like, the heck? Yeah, I mean, I you only that. have worked there forever, so. Right, yeah, wow. Pull some strings, man. That, that's Whoa, kind of right. wrong. Might be time yeah. to renegotiate your contract. Man. There you go. For real. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah. Um, so, Sensor, before you got here, we were talking with everybody about, like, what got them into, like, uh, being a sneakerhead and collecting kicks and, like, uh, where that passion comes from. Uh, I was wondering if you want to like share what got you into uh the collecting so so growing up i was very much so a blank slate uh a lot of my like my personality traits and my interests and things of that sort came from the people that i had around me i had people like ride around me uh, my best friend paris uh, they were very much into sneakers um and then also as a kid i didn't get to have shoes like that like you got a pair of shoes at the beginning of the school year Right, and then you got another pair of shoes at Christmas time. Not because it was Christmas, but because it was halfway through the school year, and you probably messed up your first pair. So you know we'll give you another pair for the second half of the school years. It's kind of how that went. And then when I finally got my own money, like you know working after high school, like I don't smoke, I don't drink. Like what else was I gonna spend my money on? But shoes, something that I could not have as a child. And then I just like naturally gravitated over into the SBs because they just had such personality as like a sneaker. So, like that's that's what really got me into it. You, I, I blame Rod, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars later, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no closet space later. I just wanted to right. find more people like me. <laughs> My well, bad, man. Can I blame right. you for all the? Can I blame you for all the money I've spent on Pokemon then too, Rod? While we're at it, <laughs> dang man. <laughs> Just right, right over here being a low key influencer on everybody. Uh, <laughs> I'm an influencer minus minus the the bad personality when I'm off camera. Like I actually just like helping people find things that they like, you know. So yeah. I yeah. feel that. Yeah, if, right you, if, if you got if you got into SB, so that's what like early 2000 runs and stuff. The original run. So I would have started collecting in 2010. Okay. Uh, the very first pair of SBs I picked up were the Boba Fett's. Uh, that was a gold oh, box. Nice. So that was yeah, probably yeah, yeah. like a 2007, 2008 shoe, probably. Right. But yeah, I remember, like, I, I talk to people all the time. Like, so uh, earlier when Rod was talking about, um, you know, like sneakers becoming like really hot around like that 2012, 2013, you know, you got Instagram. Uh, that's when you started having uh, the influencers. People like, you know, Kanye right. West was wearing ones. He made ones hot for a long moment. Wale, Wale brought phone posits back from the death. Nobody wanted phone posits. Uh, you know, he he brought a lot of attention to. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Oh, uh, he had a lot of attention to like uh, to SBs. Uh, you know, other football shoes. There were just like a lot of things that like. Uh, you know, certain rappers like Pharrell, uh, you mm -hmm. know, Lupe Fiasco, you know, all these guys, uh, you know, that I'm listening to and they're talking about these sneakers. And I'm like, man, like, you know, I, I want these shoes that these guys are talking about. So, you know, I go back and listen to like old Wally mixtapes. So I'm buying, uh, you know, silver boxes and gold boxes. I'm going back and buying the bucks. Nice. I'm buying the bison. Nice. I need a pair of Jedi's. Like, you know, I'm grabbing all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Damn, yeah, I, I only it. ever had two of SBs. Use lasers and Cinco de Mayo P rods. I couldn't keep up. They were just too rapid for me. Like I remember I remember back I, before um back before SBs had release dates. You just right. had to show up to the skateboard shop. So sca- yeah, exactly. And just exactly. Beat. I missed that entire wave because I actually quit sneakers for like three to four mm-hmm. years. And then I kind of got sucked back in because um, the World Cup was coming around and all these like limited edition like Air Force One started popping up. I'm like, oh, Man. and then yeah. it just didn't stop. <laughs> oh, no. like, I took a I took a pretty big hiatus as well, you know, doing adult stuff, paying off student loans and yeah. then they're like so i would i would twice probably buy myself a pair of shoes you know get something really nice like kind of during the hiatus i need to pick up like a pair of mama bears um and then there was one day i'm at work it's probably about a year and a half to two years ago i have my stussies on like i just i wear all my all my you know stuff to work and this dude's like right. dude's freaking out and i'm like oh those people know stuff about sbs or whatever it's like you're wearing those at work and then i go onto stock x and I look to see how much the shoes are, are. And I'm like, oh, like, and I go and check all of my shoes. I'm like, dude, like everything I had in my collection has went up like five folds, like some of them tenfold. Like this is crazy how, like how much my collection has gone up. And part of the reason, like, I feel like there's been such a giant shift, StockX, like just like those sites and stuff like that. Cause when we were kids, you know, we used to look at East Bay magazines. Yep. Uh, you know, we, we used to go on the flight club and look at sneakers and stuff like that. But now everything is just so accessible. Like, it's like, because before, thinking that, okay, like paying three to $500 resale for a shoe was like madness. Nowadays, it's it just still like, is. Uh, you know, it's it like, still is madness. A lot yeah. of people, Kids, they see it as the norm. Three, it's crazy. $500 for a pair of shoes. Never do that. <laughs> no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. I, I can't say that, man. I just I just dropped three hundred the other day. How does it work now when the shoes released or announced? Is it like a queue system? Is it a lottery system? Like because obviously the the rarity of the shoes or the kicks is based on how many they make, correct? Like how yeah. many? Yeah, like two hundred or two thousand or whatever. What sucks is um, limited editions don't mean anything anymore. Now you know before, yeah. you know they, they used to to have this tier where it's like a tier zero, tier one, and and. Yep. You know, it, it's with the collaboration with a skate shop or a certain boutique or whatever. And then, yeah, you have a limited run. Nowadays, it's all superficial where it's like, oh, you know, the, the sneaker company is just trying to create a certain amount of hype. And you're basically marketing as, you know, it's, oh, it's a limited drop when, you know, you're releasing like, when really it's not. you know, 100,000 right. pairs or something like that, you know, or, you know, 500,000 pairs. But they're trying to like just make it sound at super limited. And then people just start feeding that cycle mm-hmm. and, you know, start using bots and whatnot to, like, cop sneakers and then putting in on stock eggs, trying to make a profit out of it. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really ugly cycle right now. It, it really is. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that I think the best business done in any sort of collecting culture, you know, they always say that you should separate business and, and relationships. And I do think that there are some very obvious cons with that. But. I, I think the best business, especially in, in footwear cultures for the sake of today's episode, is definitely done through great business and great relationships. I think, um, you know, I, I went through like a, a rough patch in the shoe game for a while um, and I, I sold a lot of pairs that I just outgrew, you know, and I gave a lot to kids and stuff. And, um, you know, it, I did that during a time where like selling shoes that rapidly was kind of looked like down upon. But because people knew me and they knew that it was coming from a good place, I wasn't trying to like make a quick buck like I'm trying to, you know, pay my rent you know pay my bills or whatever you know me and my right. girlfriend at the time had a place across town and so we're just trying to you know keep up on bills um you know they're more inclined to shop with you but you know very you make a really good point about like social media and just everything becoming too accessible sometimes not even accessible in a in a, in a way of like being able to tangibly get these shoes but you know back in the day when a new uh you know shoe release or when a new shoe was coming out or like a new pokemon set was coming out or something you could go to that store and they'll let you look at the shoe and so then from there you would go home sleep on it for a little bit forget about it then remember it again see how it makes you feel in a couple days so on and so forth but now with the way social media works and like how heavy the marketing is a shoe doesn't even physically exist yet sometimes it's just a concept sketch or it's just a blurry shot or somebody like travis scott or Kanye West or somebody wearing the shoe 
and because I can constantly go go back and keep looking at that that piece of marketing on Instagram, Twitter, you know, whatever the case may be, TikTok, um, and now it's still in my brain. It's in my brain, and they're telling me that it's limited. And now because they're telling me that it's limited, I now need it even more because I know that if I have it, other people won't, and I'll be the guy for a couple weeks, you know, because I got the new release, and you know, the next one isn't here yet. And so, you know, I, I think, um, you know, the marketing behind sneakers. I would almost go as far to, to say that it's probably the worst part of sneakers. You know, they are actively marketing these shoes in a way to make you feel like you can get them and you can't. And as we all know, you know, like we've seen cartoons where you put, you know, a dog on the treadmill, and put the thing in front of his face, you know, he'll just he'll stay on it till he gets it, but he'll never get it. And so it's just I don't know. It's just uh, yeah. it, it's really unfortunate to see kind of where the shoe game is is kind of gone because how I was introduced to it. If I was introduced to it in this day and age, I wouldn't last very long. And to hop on that point, I think the best example I can give right now that's most recent is the uh, the Kobe Six uh, Mamacita yeah. that just dropped, mm -hmm. where it's you know paying tribute to Kobe Bryant and his daughter, mm -hmm. uh, you know Gigi. I personally don't understand why it's a limited drop, especially since part of the, part of the proceeds are actually supposed to go towards the foundation. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you make it a general release so that everybody can get a pair, including myself, and you know everybody makes money, more money goes to the foundation, you know money goes back to Nike, and everybody else is happy too. Yeah, because right. like they're not, they don't make money on the secondary market at all once like you bought the shoes no they and don't you, like resell them yeah that doesn't really help but the secondary all. market is all hype you know it's all about hype yeah. you know yeah. it's just feeding that machine yeah they don't they don't crazy. make any money off the second but you know you know to your point you're definitely right they certainly control where that narrative goes after the <clears> shoes have come out you know i think i i would almost go as far to say that maybe a lot of these executives they're like, okay, we know this shoe is going to sell out, but we want to see what it does after these people have it in their hands. Like, is there a large, you know, frantic fight for these sneakers? And I think of all the basketball players to do a, a limited, really funky release like that with Kobe Bryant would be the last one on that list. It just, and, well, let me rephrase it. A lot of basketball players have had sneakers, but of all, like, the, the big ones in the last decade, um, especially with, you know, Kobe Bryant being dropped for Nike and then coming back for the Kobe 4 all the way up until now, it just seems a little weird to do that with him because he does like a uh, he does a Mamba Curio every year for like his soccer thing that he does. He makes sure they get sneakers and he does like the the, the Kyle Kobe's as well too. you know, supporting the fight against breast cancer um, and just he does a lot of really like charitable things. And so to see and even like the first go round of the Kobe four fives and sixes, a lot of those colorways. Well, OK, maybe not the Kobe fours. Cause that was like his first shoe back but the fives and sixes for sure sat i have multiple pairs of sixes at my father's place uh general color releases so to see them bring the shoe back and then make it like this really limited thing it paying tribute to him it just doesn't sit right with me right right like and, and the irony is like when they did the pro throws mm -hmm. the kobe one set i have two pairs of kobe ones i bought one full retail one at the outlet store. It's one of the best shoes ever fucking made. Yeah, sorry. No, you didn't, can, didn't mean to cuss. My okay. bad. It's okay. You're good. You can cuss. <laughs> Just don't but, overdo it, buddy. But, uh, you know, like, it, it's it's crazy. Like, that particular release, especially since it's paying tribute to the, you know, the guy mm -hmm. paying tribute to his daughter, you know, with the proceeds going to a foundation to, to help, like, you know, like, like, girl sports and, and just, you know, an overall, like, good cause yeah not 100%. having it uh you know not producing like a million pairs to make sure everybody gets a pair is kind of weird to me it's just really weird so i don't first, understand it the first thing that pops into my head is they make a bunch more pairs and it doesn't matter because all the resellers just get all the pairs and then you got to worry about the resellers taking advantage of a shoe that is supposed right. to you know like, there's there are certain shoes you just like sit there and you're just like dang like this is supposed to be for a good cause, and you're right. buying this shoe and then mark it up for two or three times the price when people are like, so like we, we all know, you know when uh, when Kobe Bryant passed, the first thing that popped into my head as a sneakerhead was like, oh my gosh, I am never going to be able to buy another pair of Kobe's again because and the that's prices exactly what happened. are just going to. I got lucky, um, it was like right after it had happened. Someone locally was selling 
a pair of what the Kobe sixes and sevens as a package deal for twelve hundred together, and I bought that because I knew prices on Kobe's were going to skyrocket. Now to just grab one of those is like thirteen hundred dollars, and I'm like, dang, like I. It's ridiculous. God. Yeah. How do you three feel about? Because remember, ten or eleven years ago, they did like a Back to the Future two sneaker. But it was oh, yeah. oh my god! You could only you could only bid on them. Like there was no retail price. It was just a yeah. right. bid, and they only made so many. But I remember right. though, watching them going to that website, going uh, someone sold for one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Like what? Right. How does, does that mess up the whole economy when, when studios do that? When when companies do that? So that one's a little different. That one was all the proceeds went towards Michael J. Fox Foundation for yeah. you know uh, for what what's he dealing with? I'm totally for space account right now. Parkinson's. There we go. But that's a good cost, right? And those shoes were made in limited runs for that particular reason. And, yeah. you know, like it's, you know, there was a 2011 release without the, the auto yeah. laces and then the 2015 release with the auto laces. A friend of mine has the 2011 pair, which I'm, mm. still, I, I'm jealous mm. because he was one of the smart people that actually saved the, the, the box, not not the box that the shoes came in, but the, UP, the, the box with the UPS labels and whatnot. He told me like, yo, it says, it has like little things of, uh, you know, like um, where like the, where it's shipped from like the city and sort of like, you know, one, one pine mall and stuff like that too. Yep. And I'm wondering like how many people threw away that box with, right. the, la with the labels and everything like that. You know, I was like, oh man, this is dope. And he's like, should I sell it? I'm like, dude, just hold on to it, man. You know, like, that's just, actually just hold on to it. Yo, definitely. You know what's funny? That's actually one of my favorite times in, in footwear history, Greg. I'm actually glad you really yeah. brought this up because you know they, uh, you know the the movie shoes like like cards and like everything. You know, like when different studios get involved, of course that's going to drive up the price on things. And you know, 2015, right. like you said, they did the auto lacing, and then in 2011, what's funny is the 2011 ones didn't sell out as quickly as the 2015. I know the 2015 has more lore to it because that was the year the film took place canonically, but um, they sat. They and I'm saying sat real like loosely, but they were on pickyourshoes.com for like six thousand dollars for at least about a year or two. Now, of course, back in those days, nobody's dropping that type of money on sneakers. But to uh, to tie it back around to Kobe Bryant, there was a 2009 Marty McFly Nike Hyper Dunk release. Now, before Kobe Bryant was you know allowed to come back over to Nike, uh, he was wearing the the Nike Hyper Dunk. So he was wearing them in the Olympics that year. He was wearing them just all all throughout the season. And they did a Back to the Future release at a Nike town. I want to stay in L.A. I couldn't think of any other place it could be besides where he's at. But in L.A., he pulls up in the DeLorean <clears throat> and the shoes have the fancy box and the fancy marketing and all that really cool stuff with it, man. So, you know, Back to the Future, basically any any movie film that has like a pair of shoes, a pair of one off somethings attached to its name. They're gonna go for a lot. The Alien Stompers, I believe that was uh, the Reebok. Uh, the Reebok yep, shoe. Reeboks. Yes. Um, the Nike Carnivore uh, from Godzilla, or not Godzilla, but from Jurassic Park. Jurassic um, Park. Batman. Batman and yep. the Green ba Goblin. Batman '89. Yep. Jordan Six with the boot. Somebody did a restoration of that. It looks, it looks awesome. Gosh, so, dude. Denny, Denny actually asked a really good question in the chat. So. Um, you know, I know on a show like Retail Therapy, we're also talking about, you know, buying these things, too, as opposed to, you know, just the collecting aspect of it, you know, of what we have in abundances. And uh, he says, you know, how do we feel about stock X news and the fake shoes being sold and such? And I have a very interesting outlook on that. Now, we talk about Nike and how the stronghold that they have on the market. And then stock X is kind of like the king of the aftermarket, the secondary market. Yeah. And what ended up happening, and I know we we hate talking about NFTs, but what ended up happening was StockX started creating NFTs of Nike shoes, and Nike quickly ended that. They were like, we are not doing that. And I think it was because of that that Nike realized, okay, StockX is a bit more of an issue than we actually thought. And so now we're not going to work as closely with them. They never really worked close, but they knew that they existed and they respected their part of the shoe game. But now they're, uh, they're trying to pull their shoes off of the site because replicas and fake pairs of these Jordans and these sneakers are starting to kind of slip through the cracks. Now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> fake shoes have always slipped through the cracks. Nike has always known StockX did this. I think they're using this as a scapegoat to now try to, you know, put StockX in the ground. Because if you guys have been paying attention to the news, Nike's trying to pull their shoes out of Foot Locker and Champs and stuff. So they're trying to become like their own 
Disney World Nintendo thing with shoes. Like they just want it all to themselves. Yeah, they, they, they're shifting from brick and mortar to e-commerce. I mean, if you think about it uh, from a financial standpoint, it kind of makes sense. You know, less overhead, yeah. less money spent, you know, less marketing. But also with the StockX thing, it's, it's how, you know, services like that, they sell you on the fact that they can guarantee you that your sneakers are authentic. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you can guarantee that. I'm sorry. Like, you know, because fakes are so good nowadays. Sometimes there are fakes better than the real pairs. And and, and that's the crazy part. Some some of these replicas are way better in quality material wise than the actual pair itself. Yeah. You know, like how can you actually tell with a guarantee that that the pair of shoes that I'm getting, you know, is is, is not fake? It's it's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. Like if I unless I show you the receipt from Nike, I, it's it's exactly it's borderline impossible these mm-hmm. days. And I think that's a genius marketing ploy. I mean, of course, it, it's coming at the expense of not just StockX. I mean, they're not the only consignment shop. There's Fight Club and Riff LA and a bunch of other locations. But it's coming at the expense of you know a place that we know we've been looking at for years. You know, we might not have ever bought anything off of StockX, but it's always nice to window shop in. To see them kind of get right. destroyed like this in in the news really really sucks. Um, do yeah, it's always like like do certain brands come with certificates of authenticity or like no, is that something? No, not at all. Not really? not not unless it's like a super limited edition mm-hmm. type, you know, one off like one one of one or you know one of fifty. You know, then they'll have little like marking on the shoe and whatnot. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. But otherwise, like, you know, technically, you know, um, you know, a Jordan 1 back in the day, it was nothing but a general release. It's only limited now based on the color because people want it. And so they're just cutting down the numbers in production. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's not like super limited or anything like that. It's just, you know, people, it's supply and demand. It is. When it comes down to it. It's really crazy. Like, there are times. So I, I felt like back then it was more so, okay, this colorway is it's what's making it like the hot thing Mm -hmm. but now it's not so much really the colorway it's the actual model of the shoe so if it's a jordan one you just know no matter what colorway they could put purple black you know see-through green you know all in the same shoe and because it's a jordan one it is going to just just sell like i mean that that's it it's crazy matter. to see that too, because so, Jordan ones will just sit forever. Oh my God! Look at these. So, so these are a pair oh of 2016 black and reds. I've always wanted a pair of these. Never was able to get them because people were just buying them out. Yep. Yeah. So I managed to get a pair. These are on ice, uh, dead stock. I haven't worn them yet. No. But you know, I, I just you know needed to have them. But apparently, like at one point in time, these were going for two thousand dollars. Not anymore. Mm. But I'm like, yo, I can pay my rent twice. Like Man. with a pair of shoes, like you know, this is insane. And what? Did, That's did, amazing. Back in the, back in the day, it retailed for what eighty dollars, dude. And see, I'm so glad you said that because if there was more, if there was a better outlet, like if Complex or Nice Kicks or Sneaker News did more sit down content explaining the history of shoes because that's pretty much like the interconnected highway of people like you know wanting to get into shoes and buying, selling, and re- and, and trading and all that. If they did more sit down, actually explain why these shoes are popular, because a lot of them do that. They're like, Michael Jordan wore the flu games and scored 38 points. He was sick. That's why the 2009 Air Jordan 12s has the little sick face on it and whatever. Or he wore these in Space Jam or the Mo- Marty McFly Hyper Dunks. Like, if we actually explain what these shoes were to the culture and what they looked like and how much they actually went for and how accessible they were, I feel like people's outlook on shoes would change. Like, for instance, like you said, the Air Jordan 1. Jordans didn't always exist. There's a reason why the first, I think it's one through eleven, Jordans, they share a lot of the same pieces with the with with the Nike shoe counterpart. Like they share a lot of the same technological pieces. It wasn't until the twelve to now that they're using you know original Jumpman pieces. But like the one, the the Air Jordan one, like you just showed, and then of course the Nike Dunk, like Alex was talking about. Bro, there the are Air so Jordan. many times somebody comes up to me, nice ones, and I'm just like. <laughs> They're dunks. Never, never They're, mind. It's but just like, if never there was, mind. But if there never was information mind. out there that could help people with that, it'd be so awesome. The Air Jordan 2 and the Nike Pythons, the Air Jordan 3 and the Revolutions, the 4 and the Flight 89. Like, all right. these shoes are just like Michael Jordan's shoes up until the Air Jordan 11 was just a counterpart of a Nike. They're just taking apart and just retweaking it a, a type of way. And I feel like 
if we just had more of that, the shoe game could go into a better space. But it's just all hype, hype, hype. Kanye wore it, Travis Scott wore it, uh, and I want it. You know, it's just it's messed up. I've wow. I've been a I've been a big believer that I feel like the sneakers app was actually the worst thing that could have happened to the sneaker game. So it's like ten years ago. If you were a sneaker reseller, I felt like you really had to try. I mean, you had to get up early, six in the morning, go outside, sit at the mall. Uh, you know, you had to have relationships with people that, that worked in stores to go and get the shoes. But now, you just get on your phone, have multiple email accounts, and you know, nine o'clock hits or whatever time it is in your in your time zone. And you Seven a.m. in button. California. You just you just hit a button. And you go for the shoes. There are people that know nothing about shoes at all that try for shoes now because they know that if they hit these shoes, they can resell them for a ridiculous amount. I'm at work right. and they're in Nebraska Furniture Mart guys and there's like group of guys and they all just, you know, hey man, you know, I'm trying to get this shoe. I'm trying to get this shoe. I know the shoe's going for a lot. I don't know anything about this shoe, but they, they know that how easy it is to just log into an app and click a button. Back when the chunky uh, chunky dunks dropped, there was a Nebraska Furniture Mart guy who hit. He didn't even know what the shoe was called. He, he hit on the shoes, got them, resold them. And I'm just like, this is yeah. just, just such pain. It's just that too is painful. accessible. It's it's very difficult to even be an, an enthusiast these days. Now, now on the topic of being enthusiast, because I know we all like to collect, but we're all enthusiasts at heart here. Uh, if not, if shoes are just collecting things. I know we're coming up on the hour mark, and I'm, I'm actually very curious to see everybody's collection. Blake, I know you have some cool stuff you want to show off. Uh, oh, Alex, shoes? Marian, I want, I want to see everybody's God. stuff. Can, can we start? Can I see so, everybody's so, toys? So here, so, oh, man. So, so can I uh, actually take it back to the, the sneakers app thing? So when, it, when, they, when they first launched it, I thought it was awesome because I'm like, yeah. oh, wait, I don't have to wait in line now. I can just, like, roll out a bit, click, and then go back to bed and get a pair of shoes that I want. <laughs> awesome and then it turned into this monster right yeah, 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 yeah. these were the first pair of shoes i got off sneakers it's one of my favorite ever <coughs> like the air rift air rift yep <coughs> damn, damn. Made, made, made for uh you know kenyan like olympic runners uh back in the day in like 1989 i want to say no, i'm sorry wow. 1998 hmm. and they actually came with like split toe socks too like ninja socks oh dang okay wow. yeah make sure y'all are ready yeah. <laughs> So, but like I, I use them with my Japanese running socks. So like you know, it's all toe socks. Man, you be all cozy. Yeah, man. It's like it's, it's an actual split toe. I love that. Those are so dope, man. Those are really. Cool. It's one of my favorite shoes ever. Man. It's just because the design is just so unique. Man. But uh, oh yeah, go go ahead, man. I didn't mean to yeah. uh, hijack yeah, your. Yeah. Who's all right? Who wants to like? Yeah, you guys. Uh, censored Varian and Rod, you all collect kicks. I here's the thing about me: I my feet are like extra wide. I gotta get extra wide shoes, right? Oh man! So like, monarchs, man. Collecting all day. Yeah, monarchs, never heard of monarchs. Nike monarchs you can get them at the outlet store for like yeah, yeah. 50, it's, it's, 50 it's, 60 bucks, and they last. Dad chew. And they last forever ah. though. They, they are durable. I, I mean, basically, my life is dad shoes because you my can you can so get a like, you can get a custom pair of monarchs. You can have somebody put like the black cement print on them. Oh, uh, there I we remember go. when a uh, picture surfaced of those a couple years ago, and I was like, man, they're trying to trying to get the dad out here looking fly. They they, they 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 come in four E's, so so they come oh, in super wide. Yeah, nice. Wow, I'm only I'm only three E's, so wow, that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's like one more E than I'm used to having. Like, um, now now but, you don't feel as bad as like, ha, there are people who have it yeah. worse. But no, there's like, I mean, there's a few shoes that I've always wanted. And just like, I can't pull them off. And like, one of them is I've always wanted a pair of the Vans checkerboard slip-ons. Like, oh. I, I grew up like Classics. loving like ska punk music. And like, that was like, that was like the like nerdiest the footwear shoe. of choice. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, you know, and I can just, I've, I've gone in, I've, like, tr tried to buy them, even when I was, like, a, a teenager. I'm like, yeah, my, my, my feet were just, like, too big, so that kind of, like, turned me away, but, like, whenever I find something that fits, or something like that, if I can buy, like, multiple pairs of it, I'll do it. Like, yeah, it's mostly just been New Balance and Oasis, or Asics 
for uh, for a while. Nothing wrong every with that. Once, every once in a while, a New Balance and Asics. <laughs> Let me go grab a couple pairs. You know, I'll go grab some <laughs> some New Balance Uh-oh. and Asics. You, you know, know what? Uh, right. Talking about Asics, I got something for you. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. Look what you've done. I brought on the shirt. I got something for you because I know Blake and I know. He would love this. Uh oh. Let me uh-oh. see here. So, anybody a fan of GI Joe? Come on, man. You, everybody is. All right, let's see what you got, man. Original GI Joe box art, but the pair of Asics. Oh, damn. wow. Ten so, and a half. Storm Shadow, Snake Eyes. What? Oh, damn. Boom. Oh, man. What? I would rock some Snake Eyes. Shoot. Right, so these were done by like a an artist uh, that I got put on. But so these are the Storm Shadow pairs. Yes, Gel Light the threes. Gel Light right? threes. Yep. With the yep. split yes, tongue, sir. right? The split tongue. Yep. Oh, love that. Oh, they wrap wow. over the arch really good. So I love that. Got Storm Shadow and the the insole, but got Zartan Ooh. on the outsole. Holy shit! Oh, those are so nice. Yo, wait, well, so what are we looking at there? Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let me show it again. Got a little uh, gel like three action with the uh, GI oh, Joe. Oh, the snake eye. <laughs> yep, and boo. No storm shadow action. Gel like three. So this is the uh, the snake eyes. Oh, damn, damn, what? that is a beautiful piece of work. Got a uh, snake eyes on the insole, and oh. you know, the Zartan on the outsole because they have that that mofo in uh, uh, in common. Oh, damn. Yeah, we were we were talking. I heard New Balance, so I was like, okay, I got a couple pair of New Balances that uh, you know, a nice look at. So we're bring it. some more snake. The the oh, year wow. of the snakes here. Oh, oh. wow, so so that's dope. I always tell people like when when I'm talking like. When you're buying shoes, like the sneaker that you get for the money that you're paying, I feel like the New Balance 574 is like, it's just like that shoe, especially because they go on sale uh, so often. So earlier we talked about, you know, places uh, such as, here we, go, here we go, Flight Club. This is the one pair that I've bought. Actually, I just bought another pair off of Flight Club. I bought the Bart Simpson Dunks off of Flight Club. Um, cause I figured I, I have the Homer SBs and I have the Marge SBs and those were both UK exclusives. You gotta and complete that collection. I, I don't think people in the States realize that those were UK exclusives. So I grabbed those just in case they don't come out in the States. But the oh, Asics, but those are the three lies, this is the, the first shoe that I had purchased off of a, off a of flight club. And like the crazy thing was like back when I bought these, um, it that was the cheapest place to get them. Oh, like, that's kind of. I love the materials on those. That that suede looks buttery as all hell. Definitely ridiculous. Uh, we got we got a a Colette. Uh, oh, Asics, now hold on to that because they're gone. Man, most yeah. definitely. And then I got one more New Balance shoe that I went and picked up. It's actually my favorite New Balance sneaker. That I own is just such a beautiful shoe. The uh, the Year of the Dragon. This was a pick your own uh, shoes exclusive colorway. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Dropped. That. And this oh, whole this whole shoe is 3M. So okay, there oh, we wow. go. So the dragon that dragon. Oh, I like so, yeah, I like yeah, the detail. Yeah. Print. So if you put dope. the flash yeah. on, just that's like cool. the whole shoe just like that's cool. crazy with like oh, that's super cool. the light up on the dragon there, man. Like, some beautiful stuff. Man. But, I didn't... I didn't know that they were doing stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah man, I, for like for yeah. for any brand that you think of, like they're gonna have you know like the cheapo shoes, but then they're also gonna have like some really nice stuff. Uh, right. And I feel like New Balance and Asics, they've always when it comes to like the collaborations, they've always had really high renowned names in fashion doing stuff, but just the actual whole brand in itself not having like the best reputation like you know when you talk about like the nikes or the reeboks or the adidas but when you talk like those brands like they, they've, they've got some guys under them yeah 100 percent. i guess i'll show a couple pairs too i know i got yeah, right. a couple next to me what do you got let's start let's start picking right. indeed 
I got some of my, your favorites. Uh, some of my favorites right here that I just wear around from time to time. I have uh, a Super Mario 64 RS oh, nice. Dreamer Zero. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Puma there we go. Puma nice. actually sent me these not too long ago, and they're really cool. Um, they, you know, like the little shine sprite on the back. Oh, God, can you even see that? Yeah, there, there we go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, shine sprite. It says Super Mario 64 on the inside. Um, I think this is supposed to be like one of Mario's little buttons on his overalls there. I think the other shoe has something different on the other one. Yeah, Mario's on the inside of the other one. There he is. See? Oh, boy. Yeah. Just... Fortunately, he's on the receiving end of my smiley Mario... feet. But he's... My... That's Mario's thing, apparently. Yeah, he's oh, just a... boy. Let him sniff your feet all day a ride. Woohoo. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, definitely some of my favorite pairs here. Uh, Puma, if you're watching, yo, big thank you to you guys for that. Um, I did an event at uh, North by Northeast, a sister event to South by Southwest a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and they did the, the Sonic the Hedgehog release, which I know Alex has a pair of. Um, and oh, that's I, dope. I, they didn't have a 14, because my feet are so damn big that they were like, Rod, we'll send you one in the mail. Well, as we know, sometimes things just don't work the way down the corporate ladder, and I never got the pair, but they caught back up with me a couple years later and sent me those. Um, another pair nice. that I have a pair of uh reebok ice creams okay yep yep so um you know we talk about collabs and you know just brands working with other people outside of being athletes because i think uh maybe some of these brands realize early on that not everybody aspires to be michael jordan some people want to be pharrell williams you know and that's how that's the direction yeah. we're kind of taking in the footwear game and so pharrell williams was working really close with a brand called bait and billionaire boys club and Reebok got into the mix somehow, and they did their own run of Billionaire Boys Club ice cream sneakers, and Pharrell was kind of the spokesperson behind that. And so, as you can see, the shoes are kind of like a waffle cone under there. And they're all like these really funky colors. They got the little ice cream symbol back here. Um, they say ice cream on the back. But they're all in these really kind of vibrant and funky, um, I mean, Pharrell-style colors. I have a pink and green pair somewhere in this room that I'll grab here in a second. Um, but... Yeah, those are like, you know, some of my go-to wears, especially when I'm at events because they're comfortable, they're basketball in and skate shoes. And so just by nature, you know, they're going to be a much more, you know, solid fit on my foot. I have these really big shoes just, it sucks. Varian, I'm actually glad you brought up the whole like, you know, shoes becoming more expensive and just, you know, whatever as your feet get bigger. Well, I wear a 14, so on sneaker release days, there's literally only one of those, if I'm lucky. So right, right. So. I, I'm a I'm a ten half. So that's I'm fighting with everybody else. Oh in the country, dang! So I don't yeah. get nothing. What happens? Like, how do you guys decide when you buy a pair of sneakers if you're gonna wear them or just put them in the closet? Like, what what factors into that? Is it like so for me? Price or for me, I buy what I like. <laughs> uh, not nothing's gonna change that. So if I like a pair of shoes, I'm gonna try for two pairs, so I can wear one and stock one. And then once that wears out, I'm going to pull it out of stock and wear them again. Essentially, that's how I do things. Yeah. A lot of it's really just nostalgia, too. Um, you that, know, too, I mean, yeah. Just, yeah, the nature of all of us even collecting the things we have now is because we couldn't have them when we were younger. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think, um, you know, I talked about a lot of movies like Jurassic Park. You know, they did a shoe. Um, of course, Aliens. Um, White Man Can't Jump. I know, I'm pretty sure... There's a Billy Hoyle and Sidney Dean pair of Nike Hyper Rises in their respective colors. Um, stuff like that. Or not Hyper Rises, maybe Auto Force. Not, not, not officially, but, you know, the Command Force is the official yeah. shoe of the uh, mm -hmm. of White Man Can't Jump. That's right. Those two. And so I just you know little things like that is what kind of keeps me going forward. And then, you know, I'm turning 30 soon and I'm starting to hit that point where, like, even some Man, of the you things... guys are making me feel old. Well, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, at 30, you know, some of the oh things from goodness. 15 years ago, like, technically, that Ooh, is nostalgic baby. now, too. <laughs> Man, no, no, Rod. No. Rod's constantly making me bitter. Uh, uh. Man. Oops. So. I, I, don't, I don't feel as old anymore, man. Gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> man. Blake, what do you got for us? I know you got something there. Oh, man. I, 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 I got a pair of insoles. What, what you got I over got there? these Jerry Orbach sandals. <laughs> That's dope. Yo, those are dope. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. That's cool, man. Jay That's Orba. cool. He's, what, he's a footman, I see. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, uh, he is, he's a legend, and I accept him no matter 
what he's into. <laughs> no, 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 no matter what he's into, you know? Basically, <laughs> Terry Orbach, it's like, you know, this is this is Law and Order's greatest detective right here. Where'd you get right? this? Uh, there's this artist, Brandon Bird. They do, like, some really cool, like, pop art stuff. I've also got, like, a Detective Briscoe, like, detective kit. It's just, like, a pair of, like, toy handcuffs and, like, a cop badge and, like, a little bag. It's got, like, this <laughs> branding on it. Nice, um, nice. But, yeah, no, I, I, I own some of Brandon Bird's, like, art, too. He's probably okay. known... He did a painting of Christopher Walken building Optimus Prime in a tool shed. I think a lot of people oh, know know that painting. Well, hmm. but, like, yeah, he's got a thing for Law & Order stuff. He uh, tried to build a Jerry Orbach car, and that was, like, I think the sandals were part of that promotional aspect of it. But, yeah. So, yeah. I got some Jerry Orbach case, but, like, I'm going I found these at Ross, and I love them. These Pumas. I like and, those. There's some slides. Yeah, dude, they're, yeah, like, they're fuzzy they like on the inside. Shoes. They are home shoes. Um, nice. Just warm and fuzzy on the inside. I probably made them stink horribly, but they're super comfortable. I really like the, like, padding to it and stuff like that. Really minimalist. Just, like, something you wear while you're, like, drinking your coffee in the morning and kicking back or something like that. Or just and quite honestly, around. that's what sneakers are all about. Like, you know, it's like... If, if it makes you feel good, you know, you feel good, oh, you yeah. enjoy yourself, like, that's that's all yeah. it is to it. I'm putting them on uh, right now, damn it. I had to tell a homie the other day, uh, he, uh, he had bought a pair of shoes and he, like, asked me how I feel. I was like, I don't, I was like, I really don't like them. But the important thing is, you bought something that you liked, not exactly. because everybody else wanted the shoe. That's the most important exactly. thing. Exactly. not buying something you don't like, then, I mean, I, right. just, I just don't know what so, you're doing. I'm not the biggest fan of, of this particular brand, but I saw these, they were doing a collab uh, at DesignerCon in 2019, mm -hmm. but the collab was something that I was into, and so like these are like Batman 66, like case switches and I, I just love the box too. That box like, is crazy. Oh, you man. can see the oh, Batmobile, you the see the wrapping dude. paper right there, it's like, you know, and uh which one are these oh it's like the robin ones oh wow holy shit yeah. it's got a little uh batarang right there oh that's so dope i, lo I love stuff like this right like you know, i never knew i needed a case with shoe until today right and i'm gonna go oh. to ebay and i'm gonna be upset and i'm gonna blame hold you up later. hold up so i got another <laughs> one S same, same box it even says yeah. you know Batman. But this is the, uh, yeah, this is the Batman one. I'm all throwing everything inside. So it comes with the Batarang. It's the Batman version. Oh, man, that's so 66. That's yeah. like Adam West Batman right there. Yep, that's I literally Adam West Batman. And yeah. then, uh, Batman Michael 89. Keaton. You got Michael Keaton yeah. kicks? Yeah. Oh, my so, God. Ugh. Open up the box. See the Batmobile oh, there. Holy shit. Oh damn! Damn. Uh, the the wrapping paper you can't really see anything, but it's got like the specs of the Batmobile. Mm -hmm. But then yeah, shoes here with the the Batman eighty nine style Batarang. You know insoles. The way the logo is. Man, it's like how the suit was, and it, you know, so I'm like, oh, this is cool. Those like, I'll, I'll buy those. Wide, do they? So, uh, so no, one, they question, one question I have, because uh, I know you guys were talking about uh, Rod saying he was 30 and making you guys feel old. So, do you have like older pairs that you've had to have refurbished because you know they like you know just so old and like, you don't have like wear like any repaints or anything of that sort? So, I wish I knew about restoration sooner than i than, than i knew about it right so what my favorite pair of shoes of all time my favorite pair of sh jordan shoes of all times is jordan 11 low ie or no oh, jordan wow. 11 low the black ones um wow i wore those till they rented i played ball in them and everything like that i wish i knew about restorations you know where i can just like you know replace the you know the outsole and just keep wearing them but you know i all my shoes that I ran to the ground 
back in the day, like you know, throw them away because one, you know, once yeah, once once they were done, they were done. Yeah. I I am lucky enough to live, you know, just 10, 15 minutes away from one of the best sneaker sneaker restorers uh, in the Midwest, and I okay. had him do a repaint on oh, that's uh, dope. my uh, Charles Barkley Godzilla. Yo, that is dope. Because the uh, the midsole, the orange was cracking on here. Yeah, yeah. So you know, he went and stripped the paint. We we stripped him and everything. Uh, I mean, definitely one of my favorite basketball sneakers of all time. I remember the first the time I saw these. Shoe? The official show of Nickelodeon. There we go. Yeah, it says. I think one shoe says it's, sir, it's and the other shoe Charles. says Charles. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's like a dinosaur foot. Yeah, I love that. There it is. Yeah. That is dope, man. And then it has the cactus on the insole. Right? I used to have those. Um, the one thing that kind of threw me off about those shoes is that the toes have the toe box has open holes in them. Yeah, it's open. I'm just like ah. So like when I would wear them in the snow, my socks would get wet. But out, <laughs> outside of that, like it's a wonderful yeah. romper. Like it's a beautiful. Yeah, shoe. they were supposed to be basketball shoes. It's called breathability, man. When you play ball in them, like you know, your feet gotta breathe. I know. We'll see what happened. Was our front <laughs> locker was hooping in the snow. Well, before <laughs> before we had uh, House of Hoops here, we only ever had Foot Locker, and I know that House of Hoops is like a subdivision of Foot Locker, but we had one little one in town across the mall, across the hall at the mall I used to work with, because I worked at Finish Line, so we weren't getting stuff like that, uh, and so uh, I was like, you guys are getting House of Hoops sneakers, so they got the the uh, the 2008 blue foams, and they got the neon royal ones that came out in 2011. They got Atlantic blue penny twos, red and white penny threes. But I can green half cents, eggplants, coppers, like they got all of that. And I'm just like, okay, this is this is where I'm spending my little two hundred dollar paychecks every time I get paid. <laughs> and so yeah, I bought a lot of shoes. And what's funny is I couldn't wear any of them to work because we had a strict policy at finish line where if we don't sell them on the website, you like can't if wear a customer them. asks, like, hey, how can you help me find those shoes? And I tell you at Foot Locker, that's a conflict of interest. And so yeah. We just couldn't do it, but I was like, "Damn, I spent too much money on shoes. I can't wear at work. God damn it!" Yeah, but you can wear them now, so that's right. <laughs> that's right. You know what doesn't so, like, cost uh, any money, though, Rod? <clears throat> What's that? Shack pets. I don't know. I don't censor variant. I don't know if you've heard of Shack pets, but it's the latest app from Shack News. You can okay. get it on your iOS or Android devices. You download it. Very. Right do you like pictures of adorable kitty cats? Yes. All right. Yes, I do. Sens yeah. Sens do, you have a, do you have a dog version? Well, there, I was, <laughs> censor, dude, it sounds like you like dogs. The good news is cats and dogs can both have their pics uploaded to Shack Pets, along with, like, rabbits. We've got a skunk on there. Like, if there's a pet, you can upload a picture of it. To Shack Pets, you put it on there, and you can challenge other pets to a cute off, right? So, like, which pet pick is the cutest? You challenge pets, and then you vote on all the different pet picks. This if, this this really reminds me of like like the early like 2010s, the fit battles that were going in Nike Talk, where people would oh, post yeah. their outfit, yeah. you yeah. know, they guess who had the best one. It's like that, but for pets. So you don't need... I mean, you can dress them up, too. You can... If I definitely got, need to get a pet penguin with a bow tie now. Oh, man. If you get a pet penguin, <laughs> tell me where you got that, and I will get five pet penguins. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Um, but, yeah, no, it's... Uh, like, I've got my cats on there, and they're constantly winning battles because they're much cuter than Greg's cats. Damn. Oh. <laughs> oh. Damn. Yeah. And Damn. the gauntlet is thrown. It's, it's on. All I'm saying, Greg, is I, I won three days last week. I won Shaq News three days last week just because of just playing Shaq bets. You know, like, we, we, we track it. You can basically win... Shack pets the day, the week, the month, or what? What's, what's your strategy, man? Is, is there My a strategy? strategy? Uh, I have a lot of pet picks uploaded, so I do a lot of challenges, and then the day afterwards, well, once the challenge, the challenges go up every like twenty four hours. Then I just mm -hmm. make sure I vote a lot, and if you vote every day, you get points for every vote you make, and if you complete all the votes for the day, you get extra points. Um, so you know, voting is really important. Get out there and vote. 
people on your favorite pet on Shack Pets on your iOS or Android devices. Like, yeah, I mean, I really use this every day. It's kind of therapeutic. And if I don't feel like voting, I'll just look at the. We have a scroll. You can see all the latest pet pics. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me tell you, I've really upped my my photography game. I've been getting some really really good Go. pet pics lately because I know like I'm gonna have to compete against like kittens and puppies. And that's like that. that's actually a really good idea because I know there are a lot of people when they have a bad day they're like on Twitter and they're like I'm having a bad day you know show me pictures of your cat or you know pictures of your dog or you know just pet pics so yeah. someone could download that app and instead of you know having to go to Twitter they could just be like oh yeah adorable. It gets, it's like yeah it gets rid of all the doom scrolling and you're just left with the pet pics basically yeah, it's like a that's, win -win. it is a win-win, and that's actually part of the reason that we have created Shack Pets. So it's free. You can download it today. It's it's family friendly. You can give this to your kids, and they can just instead of doom scrolling, they can like <laughs> cheer scroll. You know, it's great. Exactly. It, it's great. It's available now. Shack Pets, one word. Download it today. It sounds like uh, you might have some uh, dog dog pics you want to upload censored. Uh man i try not to take well, a picture had, of the dogs you man. have they to just, now the, the dogs now. just run away it's like what are you doing with that there like all right well <laughs> this will this will give you a good excuse to like you know figure it out get good at it you know there we go yeah because if you think your dog is cuter than my cats the only way to find out is to put them on shack pets maybe i'll go take uh pictures of rod's favorite dogs <laughs> <laughs> those dogs don't exist because i'm not i'm not a <laughs> Oh, so there's some dogs that live behind us in the house and they just wake up right every day like uh, it's like if i live if i'm living in new jersey i wake up to the sound of the train and the kids at the park and if i live in nebraska then i wake up to dogs barking so it's it's unwinnable i don't get to sleep in like how i want to man maybe you just yeah. uh, the dogs are just excited you're there rod they can't help but I, I think that's what's going on. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll be working security at Rodfest, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> there we go. That's right. right. That's right. Well, um, well, yeah, let's get back to kicks. You guys have been showing off some really, really cool stuff. Rod, yeah, can have... we actually see those Kobe's back there? I, I, see a, I see a pair, if I'm not mistaken. Is that a Kobe back there variant? Uh, oh, is yeah, that a Kobe a, 1? It's a Kobe 1 All-Star. Yeah, that's a beautiful uh, shoe. Let's see if I can grab it. Don't fall down. Careful. Try not to. Right. Yep. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Got, this, got this at an outlet. Wow. For like eighty dollars. Oh, gosh. Eighty bucks. Beautiful. Also on the subject of Kobe Bryant, I'm gonna plug my dad real quick. I am like eighty percent sure my dad has probably the craziest Kobe Bryant sneaker collection. His name on Instagram is Kobe is the is like I Z D A like the true T R U King. So Kobe is the true king, and he uh, has the yeah, and he has the craziest Kobe collection. Just gonna go ahead and plug my dad, but anyway, sorry. What else you got to show us, Very? That, that's dope, man. Uh, well, playing on the uh, the whole thing that I was showing off earlier on. It's a little masses of uni the universe revelation. I love that uh, series that Kevin Smith did on Netflix. Dude, it's so yep. good. Came out with a pair of Pumas. Like the box is just sick all in its own. You know what I mean? Like, like. This is awesome. Oh, the power. Do the, do the shoes light up and give you the power? No, Baseball. they don't. But this uh, it's a Skeletor pair nice. right here. That's dope. So I actually remember yeah. when they announced these sneakers and I was really tempted. But, like, I always get sad because I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to buy shoes that don't fit, you know? Yeah. Right. Well, so I found out about it late. And uh, so I couldn't get my size, which is a tan and a half. So, but I needed the sneakers, and uh, so you know I ended up buying a size eight just because I just, I just wanted them because it was so unique. This is the He-Man pair. Oh wow! With the battle cat laces. Yeah. yeah with, with yeah, you can can you see the orange stripes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I love I love details like that. You know, like you know, it's just it makes me happy. Yeah, it's not so much just the hype. It's just like the details that go into making the shoes and making them unique and why they, why, you know, how and why they stand out. Let's see what else do I have here? Um, yeah, I you know I get sneakers you know just for me myself interest. Like this is a local um, designer 
uh, mm. in, in, in in Oakland, like this parachutes got uh, tire, uh, and these were like the anti-racism uh, pairs that that he dropped. So I was like, I need to get these and support. And then Blake knows I love Wu Tang. Oh. Like, it's one of my favorite groups of all time. Oh, my God. I love Wu-Tang, variant. I think I got to bust out the Wu-Tang hat. Wu yeah, man. So, what my Wu? Got me a pair of, uh, you know, Wu-Wear collaboration, like, you know, Clark Aww. Wallabies. Damn. <clears throat> man, you're making me jealous. Man, they smell great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm that guy. <laughs> you, you, you and Jerry Orbach. <laughs> hey, I'm Wu Tang now. I got my Wu wear hat. Hey, there we go. Right, there there we go. International. All, all, all day, all day. Bong bong. <laughs> oh man, they're coming around again, aren't they? Man, they need to come around all the time. Dude, I, I like saw it. them. Um, I saw them on the 36 when they were doing 36 Chambers, like uh, the whole album. I just. Like I just years, bought a uh, uh, 36 Chambers vinyl, just because. Just for the I still I still bumped that I still bumped that album like it's brand new, you know, like so I have good. it on my phone. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I have a uh, actually an art piece. Uh, it's a 36 Chambers uh, art piece from an artist that I saw at a convention. It's it's so good. Like I wish I can just like grab and show it to you right now, but it's, yeah, I don't want to mess this up. Yeah, we can do yeah. another. We'll do a, we'll do a Wu Tang episode. <laughs> Man, you know what I've been trying to find is the Wu Tang Clan uh, PS One controller. Oh wow! I want that. Oh. It's such a bad design because oh. it's just the Wu Tang logo, right? But like a controller, like you right. just got the buttons on it. That, that's that's cool. Gotta be crazy. I, I don't know if I'd even want to play with that. <laughs> I wouldn't. Oh, I just keep it display piece. I've also so, got. Oh, never mind. So I was gonna say, like, I got this pair. It's it's a you know, I guess a unique collaboration pair. It's like a mm -hmm. it's the Nike 270 React, but it's made by this um, like she does like mental health therapy, uh, like therapy and oh, stuff. Okay. Like she's a therapist, so she actually got a collab with uh, Nike on this, which is why the swoosh is a little different. You Very know, appropriate it, for retail therapy, though. And it also says. In, in my, my fields. fields. Yeah. That's nice. Yo, those are dope. You can't hear the music playing right now, but it's very appropriate no. for <laughs> I got some uh some pairs too. I got my other ice creams I was able to dig out, so I got the the oh, pink yeah. with the wow. Yeah. There go. Definitely. Yeah, love these that waffle like cone on the bottom. Episode of Rugrats, man. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but uh boom, 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 boom. Right there. Boom. That's that's the kind of stuff I would wear if I were really gonna do it. Ice cream, yeah, I, ice cream on the sole, yeah. Shout Rod, out to you're years. you're a big ice cream fan in general, aren't you? Just do you like yeah, ice cream? Yeah, I do like ice cream. You know, I've been coming around a lot more to it. You know, before it was really just Alex who would eat ice cream in the house, but um, here recently I've just been having some like really rough days, and I feel like the only way to alleviate that pain is with ice cream, man. Hey, just, man the man, what's your flavor? Man? What? I got flavor? a pair of um. Oh, my favorite. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm a simple guy. I like cookies and cream, but when I get like really adventurous, I'm like birthday cake, you know, butter brickle stuff like that. You know, wow. stuff that's gonna send you right to the dentist. You know, cookies and cream is kind of a safe choice, but I like like toffee and like you know the Heath okay. bar. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Anything that has caramel in it, you, you got me. Got yeah. me, man. Yeah, I'm nice. like that. You gotta get gold medal ribbon at Baskin Robbins, man. It's just. <laughs> My favorite flavor ever. You gotta try that I'm a, stuff. I'm a coffee ice cream kind of guy. That that or chocolate and more chocolate and peanut butter. Mmm. Yes. I was gonna say I'm chocolate big. a third time. <laughs> big on peanut butter, man. Big yeah. on peanut butter in my ice cream. Um, I got another pair here. These are my uh, little Wayne. He had a shoe that uh, came out Supra? when I was working. At, yep, the Super Chimeras. And, uh, you know, he was he's a skater. I'm saying skater, you know, whatever. He skates, you know. Um, but, you know, this type of look was really popularized by, like, the Nike Air Yeezy. And the Nike Air Yeezy, of course, is a play off of the Nike uh, Air Revolution, 
I think it's the, the eight oh. It was like a yeah, it's a combination of a bunch of stuff. Yeah. The cow boot, uh, the eight oh cow boot, and a bunch of other things. You're right, and um, you know everybody kind of wanted a shoe that had that look, that mm -hmm. big kind of clunky space feel. They sat forever. I mean, nobody wants to dress like Little Wayne, but I was like, you know what, these shoes might be worth something one day, so I bought them for like thirty bucks. But the cool part about them is that they have a stash under the tongue here, where you can put your, yeah, for your weed. So if you ever get you know, out by the boys. Oh, man, you put you yeah. put spare change in there too. I thought yeah. that's where the extra laces went. <laughs> that's right. That's where the extra laces went. I used to there have we a, go. I used to have a pair of shoes with with one of those. They were just like a. I think they were DCs. Maybe it was a long time ago. But oh, like nice. skater. Yeah, I was all about skater shoes growing up. Like, mm -hmm. uh, if I could find a pair of Vans uh, that fit me, I was super happy. You know, Skechers. Always had, always had some Skechers. I, uh, um, I have DCs. A, I have a couple pairs of uh, of SBs, and they would do 420 shoes, and their 420 shoes would have a pocket in the tongue as well. Uh, I know for sure the Skunk Dunks have one. Uh, I have also a pair of like Cheech and Chong's. I can't remember if they have a pocket okay. in it Ooh, nice. or not. And I have a shoe pair called the Dog Walkers. I sh should have grabbed them when we were talking about pets. Uh, <laughs> but the Dog Walkers, I know for sure those have uh, those have a a pocket in the tongue as well. Ooh. Um, I have another pair here that I really like. Um, so they're a pair of Pumas. There used to, uh, I used to, almost said there used to be. There is a rapper by the name of Casey Veggies, and he had two buddies with him. One buddy was named Josh Pease, and the other buddy's name was Anwar Carrots. And they had a store on Fairfax Avenue in L.A., Pease and Carrots International. The group ended up disbanding. Uh, Casey Veggies still raps and makes music, but Anwar has kind of taken a very prominent shift into footwear and streetwear culture way more than it was before. Oh, yeah. And so he, he ended up doing a Puma deal. And um, let me see if I can... So these are kind of his colors, you know, it's like he does a lot of orange, a lot of grays. He loves like the gum soles. But the, the cool part is that on the inside of the shoe, it says Anwar Carrot, and, like his little signature. And he has like the carrot in there. Oh, so. that's cool. oh yeah, that's it. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's cool. So really love these a lot. Uh, definitely somebody that I really like when I was making clothes way more than I was like doing events. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was somebody that I would kind of base a lot of my inspiration off of because I love like the pieces and stuff he would make. Um, and then I also have. This is my last pair that I can dig out here. And these definitely have seen better days. But this is probably like my favorite Nike silhouette of all time. The Nike Deion Sander. Uh, Diamond Turf. Diamond and Turf. And yeah, I just, I love these. I have this colorway. And then I also had a black and purple colorway as well. That I can't for the life of me figure out what I did with. But um, love these. You know, just one of the original Nike trainers. So a Nike trainer, obviously you're supposed to be athletic. And you're mm -hmm. supposed to get out and move. Not quite as comfortable as a running shoe, but built much more, uh, much more durability in mind. And so, this strap kind of comes off here, locks over the foot a type of way like this, you know, holds you down as you're like making hard pivots and running and moving and whatever. Um, the inside too, one thing that I really love about trainers and most running shoes is that the tongue is kind of connected inside the shoe here, so it kind of gives you like a lockdown feel on top of the strap on top of everything else that the shoe is doing um and so yeah definitely one of my favorite silhouettes i should probably clean these up because i wear the hell out of them but um yeah that shoe like, is just such a comfortable feel and such a cool look too such you know cool colorways so when you uh when you brought out the anwar carrots i was like oh you know what Here, this may not be exactly shoe but it's definitely going to go along with it so uh me and rod we have a buddy uh, out in California, uh, he's a producer, uh, and he also works at Champion. Freddie Gibbs frequently okay. would be across the street from like his actual shop, you know, just you know, being him, doing himself. So Champion did a Freddie Gibbs times Anwar Carrots collab on a shirt, and they did I think like seven of the shirts. And you know the homeboy like knew like I, I I really I really messed with Freddie Gibbs like I, I like Freddie Gibbs music and he hit me up he was like yeah dude like Freddie Gibbs is across the street every day like you know we're actually gonna do a shirt together and I was like oh man that's wild he was like what size do you need I was like what he was like yeah man I'm gonna send you one of these shirts and I'm like dude like 
look at all the sizes. You are. The, I was like, man, let, 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 let me get one for them all. I'll, I'll have a kid just like give me like a three C sh shirt, man. Like we are gonna get them all. Not the three C, bro. <laughs> oh, all right. So I'm, I'm gonna do a, a slight flex real quick. Uh oh. No, Let's we're, see we're, it. We're going, we're going through them shoes. I, I'm okay. pretty sure Rod knows. Um, this is by far um, the most I've ever spent on a pair of shoes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and the pair of shoes that are worth the most money in my collection. Uh, thank you for um, you know all the sneaker inflation and prices. I've a pair of oh. Nike SB Ooh. What the Dunks. Uh, so. Damn. In U.S. dollars, I paid a little under twelve hundred dollars, or a little under thirteen hundred dollars. But the what the dunk is basically just a giant mashup of a bunch of shoes that you know were like really popular uh, throughout like the history. You know, we got the different clothing brands. Uh, you know, we got Huff here. Uh, we got the Staple Pigeon. Uh, we got Buck back here for uh, for Nike. Uh, we got like a toe box for like the tweeds. Um, and then also on the other shoe, you get even more. You know, you get the Ray Gun, you got the Cali, uh, yep. you know, you got the cement print, just a really beautiful shoe that, you know, I paid, you know, $1,200 for. This is a size 12. A size 12 of these on Stock X right now. Is going for thirty three thousand dollars. Oh my lord! Wow. Oh wow! <laughs> so you are you are not grabbing a pair of these without without getting rid of your car or, or something. I this is like my biggest regret is like, damn, like why didn't I buy two? Like, what, what, what was what was I thinking? Pay off your mortgage with that, man. Oh, man. For real. So, so shout out to Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner. <laughs> uh, I, I'm actually, I'm actually uh, kind of upset with uh, with the both of them. So, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off is my favorite movie. I have a poster of it, you know, on, on my door as well. And just when I was like, okay, because the shoe was going for about four fifty five hundred dollars, just when I was like, okay, you know, I got a bonus coming in the next couple of months. I, I've really only been buying like a couple pairs of sneakers a year. And when I was buying a pair of shoes, you know, I was buying something like kind of big. And I think the previous one I had just bought was a pair of Papa Bear Dunks. I was like, this next one, Ferris Bueller Dunks. Literally the next week, Kylie Jenner was caught wearing a pair of the Ferris Bueller Dunks. And caught. the shoe, yeah. Like, right. so, so the shoe went from like 500 to like 1200. And I'm like, I refuse. I, I, I just won't. Like, I, I can't. Nope. Uh uh. Like, just not having a pair, I guess. Sad Isn't it enough. crazy? Just like that can't shift in it. culture. You know, everybody wanted to be athletes, but then what ended up happening was like, I think people started to just have like that sudden realization with themselves. Like, you know what? It's okay to not want to be Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, uh, it's I might, easier to I, take a picture. Yeah, it's easier to take a picture than Man. it is to dunk from the free throw line. I get it. I've tried. It ain't easy. It ain't easy just normally dunking. So uh, I can only imagine trying to do it with all the monsters holding on to you. You know what I'm saying? And in, in exactly. space jam. So. Only, exactly. only, only dunking I'm doing is donuts. No. Yeah. Hey. You know? That's not, I'm with that too. I'm okay with that. I've made peace. I'm with that too. <laughs> Man, with, with those hash browns, how could you not? I've never had their hash browns. Oh, I what? Ice, I always get the like iced coffee stuff. But. You you are oh. missing out. Those are the most well seasoned hash browns I've like ever had in my life. I'm just like, dude. Oh, like, I got weekend plans. Crazy. I got weekend plans now. There you go. I'm gonna try some well, Duncan me, hash browns. There you go, man. So let me let me ask you guys this really quick. Top five uh, top five pairs right now. Like if you could just you had disposable income and access to whatever pairs you want. What would be your top three or five pairs? Very, we can start with you. I hate to put you on the spot, but I'm curious because you have a very wow. wide array of sneakers. Oh, uh, wow. Um, top five? Shoot. And it, they don't have to be in a specific order, but uh, right, what, right. if you had the money, what would you grab? Um, Wu-Tang Dunks. Uh, like Those aren't SBs, right? The Wu-Tangs aren't SBs. No, they they would. Just, I think they would just regular like, uh, yeah, dunks. 
with the Wu Tang logo on it. Um, just because I just love the silhouette of the shoe, like the um, uh, the pigeon dunks. Mm -hmm. um, I know I will never you know be able to afford them because they're going for like some crazy amount of money right now. I just love the colorway. I just love the story behind it. You know, I love the materials used. Um, let's see what else? Uh, the Nike Megs. Mm. I have to because I love Back to the Future. Got to. Uh, you know, lo lo love that whole story behind it. So that's what three, four. Uh, I'm gonna have to think about this. I don't know. Um, guess an original pair of Jordan ones, just to, to have his display, like 1985 like version of Barry Jordan was just keep and uh and a limited amount of Jordan 11 lows that's all oh, I want I like I, 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 just regulars I I, I well t so technically the pair that I like is the black and red pair it's not the the IEs were initially just the white with the, the elephant print mm -hmm. but now they call them the IE so we'll go with the Jordan 11 low IEs okay I love those shoes they're, they're functional. They they feel good. You know, mm. you can play ball in them, and and you can pair them up with like any anything you want to wear. So like, yeah. I'll go you know, a limited pair of those. I'm a big and fan I'll be of good. IEs as yeah. well. The uh, the the lifestyle one, the uh, the the green, the lime green with the yellow um, that they okay. did back when they used to do lifestyle colorways on things back in the day. Yeah. So that was one for me, but they just didn't look like they would age very well since it was like white patent leather on some of the. Which I'm like definitely go. Uh oh, wait. What are you whipping out? My favorite shoe of all time. There it is. There they are. That's a beautiful ass piece of work, man. Love those yeah. shoes. Yeah. Thank you, Tinker Hatfield. Right. The shoe is what ugly. about you, Alex? So good. Okay. Go, Alex. Go, Alex. Go. Oh no, 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 no. Go. You, you go first. You go first. Well, because if a shoe is ugly, like, but it's rare, valuable, do you guys still want to pick something up, up like that? Like, if it's super hard to get you under, let's say, like, you find it at, like, a, a swap meet or something, and it's retail, but, like, would you buy it if it was an ugly shoe? Um, you know what? And this is actually, that's actually a really good question, because I think the term buy what you like sometimes gets kind of misconstrued, because there are some people who buy things that they like and then there's some people who buy things so like they it can be looked at like there are some shoes that i bought that i'm like you know what i'm not like the biggest fan of this like yeah. silhouette and this color but like i know if i wear it like it'll spark conversation amongst other heads so like for instance these the little wayne shoes that i have i'm like i kind of like little wayne and you know what he is a rapper with the shoe so like it's probably good to buy I'm just gonna pick them up just to see what happens. And when I wear them, people are just like, dude, what the hell is going on with your feet? I'm like, oh yeah, they're the Little Wayne Chimera Supras. And then boom, it sparks a conversation because it's a strange looking shoe. And if you like shoes or if you come from a skating background, then we're gonna talk. But yeah, more times than not, I try to like make sure I buy what I like functionality wise and aesthetically. But there are a couple that I'm like, these are that ugly that I have to buy them. They just look weird. <laughs> right, right. I understand you on that. It's like times where, uh, so I have the one of the Keith Herring, uh, it's like a Reebok Classic CL yep. or something, and yep. it's literally got people hanging off the shoe, and I'm just like, oh, this is actually so ridiculous. Like I have to have this shoe. And people are just like, oh, it's just like, and, and you wear that? And I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, it's like the, the original run of uh, Jeremy Scott uh, Adidas collabs with the wings oh, and everything gosh, like that. It's, yeah. it's so like just out and, there. Yeah, it's just so out there, but like you know, it's a it's a statement piece, mm -hmm. essentially, I guess. Yeah, it's peacocking, it right? Like some shoes are exactly. just peacocking. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Like, like exactly. I I love like when I can find like a pair of shoes with like neon laces or like something like kind of gaudy. Like I right. like I like I like it when like that stuff stands out. It's, so it's I, I'm I'm a simple guy, so like you know, it's just like anything that just fits well, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with my aesthetic or whatever. Like these pair of like mm. uh, it, SB Bruins, like yep. the, the Re React Bruins, yep. and then I I had to put the fat laces on because you know I'm, yeah. I'm an OG OGB boy, so I just gotta rep like that. There you go, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love that. What about you, Alex? You got a top five? Like, I mean, I ask you this quest as if you don't pretty much have everything that you've always wanted footwear wise, any damn way. 
Well, he's so, got those dunks that just showed off. I know. So, um, <laughs> when you talk about, like, top five pairs, like, and I just sit there and just like, all right, pairs that I, I probably not ever dropped the money on. One pops in my head. Number five is probably a pair of Red Octobers. I really Yeezys? like, yeah, yeah. I really, I really like the Yeezy 2s. Uh, I, I liked all three colorways. If if I was about it back then, like actually dropping that because it, they probably would have been about the same money as like what the ducks were like back. And now I'm just sitting there and thinking about it. I was like, damn, like you know, I, I, I should have grabbed a pair of those because it, it's, it's just a freaking beautiful shoe. Um, number four, I'm gonna, number four is going to be the Hannon A6 G3. Okay. It's uh, it's kind of like you know, like a purplish, maroonish color with like a yellow gold, and it's just such a beautiful shoe. And I mean, it probably goes for like twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. But I'm just like, I don't know if I love it that much to go ahead and try to grab a pair. <laughs> uh, number three, un Reebok question. I really want this shoe. It, you know, Reebok Which question. One? It's Allen Iverson shoe, and uh, it's the 2006 year pair. Oh yeah, mm, yep. but it, it, they're just so crazy, and I'm like, oh, it's, I've never seen a pair in my size. Like they're always just like some you know super baby foot size. Uh, so that one's number three. Uh, number two is going to be the Ferris Bueller Dunk. Yep. Which is probably like the most accessible of like any of those that I could probably get at a at a pretty decent price. I think the more that I've collected sneakers and you know I've gotten to like the you know there are pairs I'm not gonna sell. I'd be okay purchasing a pair without a box, which would drop the price down a lot. So here maybe soon I might end up you know digging into the pockets and and uh and grabbing a pair. And then number one, number one is the Paris SB. Oh well, that, oh, yeah, yeah, good luck. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, good, good yeah. luck with that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, such a beautiful shoe. I had, uh, a, I had a, I know somebody that just got the London pair. London, damn. damn, yeah. But yeah, the okay. Paris, yeah, yeah. That's a nice, that's a nice shoe. It's not it's the really one nice where shoe. like every shoe is different, like design wise on them. Like the the pattern is different on all of them. It's kind of like the Air yep. Jordan. It's a representation 7. of the city. Yeah, it's a representation of the city that that it, it's named after. <laughs> yeah, and that is uh wow. I remember yeah. um, uh, so uh, West Side Gun, and uh, they have a song together, and of course Wale, you know, has a ridiculous SB, uh, and he said y'all to Paris. Uh, not Paris kicks, and I'm just like, well, why, why, why you gotta, why you gotta, why you gotta flex on us like that, man? Like, ah. Uh, I have to admit, what, Wally Monday, is a true man. sneakerhead, so I respect man. that. Man. Wally is definitely a true sneakerhead. His uh, his footwear game is, I mean, he's the sole reason why one of my favorite pairs of shoes ever, the the Nike Foam Posit, you know, rose back into popularity. Uh, for those right. who don't know, the the Nike Foam Posit is a little bit different than your average basketball shoe. I know you showed one earlier, but. The foam I, can is, I can bring it back out. Please oh. do. So the cool thing about this shoe here is that it, it has uh, it, it's poured into a mold. Unlike most shoes that are sewn together with leather and pieces and cut out of you know shapes or whatever, this shoe is actually poured into a mold and cooled. And then what happens is when you put your foot in it, it's the shoe is pretty stiff at first, but when the shoe heats up, it you know the foam is a little bit more soft, a little bit more loose, and then when it cools down, it takes the shape of your foot specifically. So there was a reason why, like, when people were trying to resell phones, people just had a really hard time doing it because the phone posit had a basically a person's foot shape to him. And now you have to reshape the shoe as you know, you got to wear it. So love the phone right. posit to death. Such a cool. So, one. so yeah, this is a polyurethane upper. Uh, mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, and um, initially when they first when Nike first created it, they um, sought out Kia, the car manufacturer. They, uh, no, no, it was Daewoo. Yep. That actually came up with the mole and the process to, to, to create that upper. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, that's I, I didn't even know that. Like that's ridiculous. Like the phone yeah. posit 
And what's funny is like that was probably one of the most expensive basketball sneakers to date oh, when yeah. it came out. I at, mean, at, at the time, yeah, back in uh, 1990, I want to say seven, seven. seven it yeah. was 180 bucks. It was like the most expensive sneaker uh, out there. The whole point was basically to have like minimal stitching, so mm-hmm. you could like stitching here and stitching here, and just a little bit here. But everything else is just one piece. Yep. Yep. So that's in your Very, top five, Russ. Uh, yeah, the phone posit just as a shoe itself is in my top five. Um, I think at number four, there was a pair of um, Air Force 180 pumps that came out, I was thinking like, excuse me, like 2014. I have the, a retro pair. They don't come all the way up the ankle. This one came all the way up and have the pump on the side. Um, yes, David, David Robinson. Yep, always wanted those, but I was always hesitant on buying them because I wear a 14 and the shoe is already monstrous. But I'm like, damn, I just don't even know if I can swing that right now. Um, That's full then, ankle protection, man. I know. And then by the time I got around <laughs> to buying them, they just they sold out on me, which sucks. Um, another pair, and they already came out again, but the, the Katrina 3s, the Air Jordan 3 Katrina was always oh, a really okay. popular one for me. Yeah. Um, you know, just it's like a mixture of like white cement and then, of course, fire red 3. You know, I feel like it's a perfect fusion of that. Always thought the pair was awesome. I'm glad that it finally came back out. Um, another one is the uh, the the God. Which ones are they? The Pearpod Eights. Yeah, the Pearpods. Um, I think they are a lifestyle Air Jordan Eight. So it's like the navy with the orange on the side, if I'm not mistaken. Um, okay. Not, yeah. Let me actually, 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 let me pull up about. a picture. I'm gonna pull up a picture. But PickYourShoes.com had a lot of the lifestyle colorways on Jordans just sitting for a while. And what lifestyle means is that. It is an athletic shoe like all the other Jordans are, but they came out with like nice jeans and t-shirts and hat and along with it as like as opposed to just a traditional like wear. Um and I'm not gonna see uh yeah, or P pods, I said pear pods, P pods. Um Oh god, I wonder can I make this bigger? Okay. Here they are. These joints Okay, yeah, oh, I remember yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, very, very cool shoe. Very cool shoe. Marty McFly Hyper Dunks is, a, is another pair. I would fucking love that shoe. And then last but certainly not least, and this is just showing my age in the shoe game, uh, as somebody who came in in that ripe era of 2009, I got to get a pair of Nike Air Yeezy ones. I have to. I was in San Francisco when the net colorway was coming out, and they only had eight pairs, and my dad was like, you're definitely not standing in line. We're on a family vacation. We don't do that. And I'm like, ah, but I would, I want a pair of those so bad. Like the inner 14, 15 year old in me is just like, Rod, go out, seek out a pair and buy them. But the adult in me is like, do not drop $5,000 on a pair of shoes. Um, <clears throat> that's the adult, the adult thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah don't do it. Adult. Well, you know what? None of us have to drop any money on these awesome Batman toys today because uh, they were kindly provided by Spin Masters for us to unbox, guys. And we're getting towards the end, so I'm gonna... Do it! Do it! Do, do it! All right. Do it! Do so, it! Do so we got, yes. we got the Turbo Boost Batmobile right here. Uh, obviously, this is from the Batman movie with our new sparkling vampire Batman, Robert Pattinson. Dude, how good was that movie, though? I haven't that movie seen it! Was ama- I what? haven't seen it! I want to see oh it! Oh, my! See? See? Uh, you have no right to say sparkling Batman now. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> I'm actually really excited it. about the Penguin. The Penguin Shame is like you. the Penguin's my favorite Batman villain. Uh, I don't know if anyone can do it better than Danny DeVito, but I'm I'm curious. To uh, you'd be surprised, man. Colin Farrell knocked it out of the park. He's a good actor. I give it. Oh, I, like, seven I totally or eight. forgot. I totally yeah. forgot that it, it was Colin Farrell too. I was like, wait, Pretty Boy Colin Farrell? Right. Yeah. Like what? Okay. Yeah, the, the pretty boys can definitely play some ugly characters. I know Jared Leto has done that a few times. Like, he'll get all in the prosthetics and right. play, like, some decrepit monster. But Yeah, um, but see, Colin Farrell does everything that that, that that you would tell anybody else not to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like smoking and drinking heavily and stuff like that. And he still looks pretty as all hell. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, wah. new Batman for me gave it a solid half, maybe eight. Um, didn't really follow the year one and year two story of Batman as well as I probably should have. So I went into this one a little blind, and it was nice to see Batman not know what he was going to do next. 
Batman always has right. a plan for something. There's always a contingency right. plan, but this is new Batman, and he's just kind of like, well, sh what the hell happened? And I love right. that. That was really cool. All right, so this is actually and, easy. And Paul Dano's take on the Riddler is is I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. That was pretty good. That yeah, was very yeah. good. Okay. Wasn't a fan of the Catwoman though. Wasn't a fan <laughs> of Zoe. What? Yo. You know, I wasn't oh. either. I wasn't either. I just fight. Listen, I Are just you got, kidding me. So listen, when when she's on screen, Catwoman has like this um, she has like this mystique to her. You know what I'm saying? Like this illustriousness, and I I feel like I don't want to see a grounded version of Catwoman. And I also feel like Zoe Kravitz's delivery of this character was like all Instagram selfies. And what I mean by that is every time they on her, she's smiling with her eyes. Like and it's when she speaks don't move the eyebrows don't move when she speaks because she's just trying to give you looks as opposed to like really delivering i feel like what Catwoman actually is and i think it's a her thing I, I think that's probably how they told her to deliver the character but i just felt like anne hathaway uh got who's the other one michelle pfeiffer right yeah love love their cat women but i just feel like zoe kravitz's just was like a little too like interesting it's, it's, she just felt like wow. it was too instagram selfie modely for me like the like just when you go back and watch and look at the way she speaks to robert that, pattinson it's just like that's so funny because i was like that girl could knock me up any day any oh time. yeah like oh, oh yeah easy goodness. <laughs> like in the cat women outfit like oh <laughs> yeah no i mean i'm i'm with that like she's a very beautiful person i mean she Shit, her mom is beautiful as all hell too, and very talented. But I just, I didn't, I didn't like the Catwoman. I just felt like, I don't know. I thought she I, did well, a good job, especially with the fight scenes. And well, Rod, like it's been nice working with you. But, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, talk about hot take. Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> okay, so check Damn. this out. The like the the tail lights. Oh, it's up got the flame. Side. Nice. That's yeah. sick, dude. Mm -hmm. This is That's really awesome. cool. So I don't know if there's battery. It's USB chargeable, which is nice. I oh, like that wild. aspect. As somebody is that who USB-C or USB-A? Uh, yes. Yes. It's uh. Well, let me see. Where does it plug in on here? Uh, yeah, it's a USB. It's a micro USB. So yeah, pretty standard. Uh, to regular USB, I. It's nice and light. The, the cool thing is, is there's like a little kickstand under here. So like, when mm -hmm. you're driving it, it'll just like pop a wheelie. Yo, I'm my cats are gonna flip out. Like I am, <laughs> I'm gonna mess with my cats. This this is just out of the box, obviously. So it still needs charging. That's why it's blinking. It'll be a solid blue once it's charged. But I like can, little can details you, like this. Can you incorporate that in the Shaq's pets? That's what <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. I was like, you need to take some pictures and put on Shaq's pets. I uh, I mean if I could get if I could get a good pick of one of them like attacking it or something like that I will. The cat sit um, on top of it. Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There so we is, go. This is the little Batman remote control. Remote. I think okay. it's got the Batman logo on here, like the new one. Oh, I don't want to flip everybody off, but like I don't know if you can see that there, but there's like a little Batman logo there. But they, I think they missed out. Like you could put the bat ears on this thing and made it look like a batarang. And I mean, they kind of gave it that shape, but it's. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like they could have Batmanified the remote here a little bit more. Small, but you know, small complaint. I really like that this USB C uh, or USB chargeable. Um, it reminds me. Lie. of... I, is this I like the flame Dodge blinking. charger? What? Yeah, it's yeah. I think so, but not. I just like the fact that the that the flame's blinking, even though it's yeah. supposed to indicate that the battery's low. But cool. Yeah, it's still stylish. Let's keep my battery low. This is very stylish. Um, can't pop the hood or anything. There's also speed. You can adjust the speed. There's a little like oh, uh, nice. knob here, so you can adjust how fast That's it cool. goes. I guess depending on. Yeah, I mean, I have a small apartment, so I probably don't want it to go too fast, or I'm gonna crash into stuff. Um, yeah, I could take this out in the yard, and mess with it too. But this is cool. Probably build a ramp. Start so, doing jumps and stuff like that too. I like, yeah. I also like that even though there's nothing in here, there is like a difference between the plastic that's used for the windows and the matte finish on the car too. Nice. I think that's a nice little touch. I didn't realize that Batman drove Dom's Charger from the Fast and the Furious. Now, that's kind of cool. better. It's better, better than Dom's Charger. Oh, it it's was nice better. knowing you too, Marion. <laughs> it's all about it's all about family, man. 
It is all about family. The Bat Family. That's wow. right. Dude, I would love a Batman Fast and Furious crossover. And now, <laughs> now I hope you feel bad about talking smack on I my, my homegirl Zoe Kravitz Mm-mm. here. Because we're about to unbox this Selena Kyle figure. Um, This is the 12-inch figures. Uh, they make... I really like the... Um, they make, like, the smaller, like, 4-inch figures of not just the Batman, but a lot of the DC figures. Uh, I believe those are part of Spin Master's uh, product line as well. And I really like those. Well, oh, whoa. Miss Selena Kyle. I wonder why they... Is she not Catwoman in the movie? Or did, like, why did they call it this Selena Kyle, I'm wondering? Uh, well, Catwoman. she didn't really have a costume. She had cats in her apartment. They never called her Catwoman. It was weird. It was just like, I always it, feel like they could have been a different character altogether. All right, great. Well, well, it's it's technically technically Catwoman year zero ish yeah. as well, like uh, zero to year one. So it, she's kind of getting into it. Okay, yeah. so we got some pretty standard points of articulation. Oh, actually, there's some good articulation here in the arms, the head. Can she f- can she flip him off for 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 dissonor? I mean, let me see if I can. <laughs> okay, do a little like. Bafangu here or something. No. <laughs> maybe maybe just kind of uh, like now now I really feel like uh, I'm gonna go and see this movie, man. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go see it Friday. I you guys both said you like I think two of you said you like the movie. That doubles the amount of people that I've heard that actually really like the movie. Well, I so I have it. I have it on HBO Max, and I'm, I'm leaving this awesome weekend. Movie. You need to All watch. of my timeline, people are like, dang, I didn't want to watch well, emo Batman, and the movie was too long. I don't think it was emo Batman. I think it was just a Batman that they weren't used to seeing. Again, it's, yeah. it's year two, and yeah. uh, you know he's just he's just not the man that we've seen with Christian Bale, with Val Kilmer, with you know ben, Val even Kilmer. Ben Affleck. Val Kilmer. That, that's yeah. that's the Batman you pick out of all the other Batmans <laughs> you could have picked. I mean, even. Even him, like he just he just doesn't have it together yet. But it's yeah. it's because he's early into the you know the thing. So Catwoman, yeah. Catwoman can jump kick your ass though. I mean, yeah, I would pay go. her to jump kick me. So What's I mean, that? Rod, super lame. Yeah, I agree. Really cool, yeah. I'm oh not dang! Talking. I'm not talking to <laughs> <at> all. <laughs> I, I, I can't protect you as Catwoman. I mean, I'll, I'll you're getting jump kicked. You're getting jump kicked <laughs> by Catwoman <laughs> right now, Rod. Yeah, I, I would let her jump Take kick me. That. I would. I wouldn't fight her Take about that. it. I'd be like, please. I'd be like, thank you. May I have another? Really? I would I be would. like Zoe. You respect me as a human. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't let Catwoman kick me around. I'd be like, look, we need boundaries here. You know? I have a safe word. Like, can you take me out to dinner first? <laughs> right. It's gonna gonna get. I mean, you want to write like Thirty Shades of Rod? That's like, you know. Oh, that, that that'll like, write itself. That's right. Right. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, I think the one thing I would say about this 12-inch figure is the torso doesn't twist at all, which means it's like not like you're you're like the the appendages all like have a lot of mobility. Uh, even the head has like it, it can, you know. Oh wow! Tilt oh, oh, that's a cool. A little bit here and there. I mean, you can turn it all the way around and like hmm. you know. Get like what was that movie with the possessed? Like you can you know all the turn crazy her head upside movies. down, poltergeist or something like that. Like oh yeah. there we go yeah yeah, you yeah, can yeah, do yeah some yeah. you can do some ring shit. Have this like climbing up the wall backwards with her head backwards like that. I don't know. Uh, Ex- Exorcist style. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, like Exorcist. I said poltergeist, didn't I? Yeah. Same, so same difference. So pretty cool. I mean, I think it's kind of a bummer that it doesn't come with any accessories. I would no say whip. those. No. Did she have any accessories no in the film? I think she only just had the. Did she, she even the have whip. the whip? It's like Did she have the whip? Tools, but like that's really it. Like a little box of these tools. That's really all she had. Yeah, um, and she she did have the whip though. But now she we had got, a gun too. We got the uh, PS2 Resistance here. The actual Batman. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, let's get this open and out of this box. Wow, wow! What now? So, well, I have an, I'm actually pretty stoked off of these because 
I have a pretty extensive uh, Batman figure collection as well. Oh. I've actually been fighting the urge to get collect all the Batman 66 figures that they've been doing out it. lately. Do the Amigo, the, the Amigo re-releases or whatever. But uh, I do, like, the other cool thing about Batman 66, Mike Allred did most of the comic book art for that. And he's one of my favorite comic book artists. So I've been really into, like, a lot of the 66 stuff that they've been reading. Okay, first of all, cloth cape on the Batman. We all grew up in, like, oh, the, nice. like, the Kenner generation of toys and stuff like this. Like, this was such a rare thing. I have a, I don't think, I, I don't know if I have the capes, but, like, the 89 Batman figures for the movies all came with, like, clip-on, clip-off, like, uh, yep. capes. Yep, yep, I remember yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, like... Banshee uh, has so the plastic one. little... Remember Banshee, the action figure Banshee? Yeah, it had the plastic, plastic wings. Plastic yes, plastic. yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay, I gotta say, this Batman... This Batman figure's good. I really, like, on both of these figures, the plastic that they use has a nice, like, sheen to it, and they've all... Uh, and they put that in contrast with the matte finish. Which is good, because, I mean, these are basically, like, all the figures, like, are black on black, like, right? There's not a lot of right. color to them, so being able to kind of define a lot of the details of it by just giving it, like, a different plastic color or just a different finish overall, I think, is good. Uh, I don't know if that's, like, Robert Patterson's likeness or anything like that, but I like this bat. I like this look. This is, like, a classic Batman head just very stern eyes they even painted the eyes like i don't know if i'm going to be able to pick up that amount of detail here but like mm -hmm. you can it's got pupils and like his eyes are i don't know blue yeah it looks blue yeah that's yeah. blue oh so from a, a, sorry i'm just getting lost batman, in batman's eyes from from a batman tech nerd standpoint he's got like these like contact lenses that he uses in the movies that's super dope like you'll yeah. enjoy it yeah yeah, I really like this little, like, he's got the little side holster here, like, on the leg. This is a, this is a cool little toy that's actually, yeah, an impressive amount of detail overall on these, should, I would say. Should totally go watch the movie, Check man. Check out I'm the bat you. booty. I don't know. I could just stare at this I'm bat. A, I'm going I'm to I'm try and go, uh, maybe, maybe on this, Friday I'll, I'll find some, some stuff to come watch it with. Let's see, do I have a toy I can, uh. I don't know. I feel like if that this Batman could beat the crap out of the very <laughs> doughboy. Or maybe I don't know, maybe they could be more than friends, but Batman would just show up probably and be like, I hate carbs. Ugh Take that <laughs> And like the Pillsbury Doughboy would just laugh at him a bunch as he does it, like hee 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 which would remind him of the Joker. It <laughs> As he gets punched into the ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love that. Definitely wow. need that crossover and stuff. The bats meets the fats. I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> Bat I got my money on Pillsbury. Batman versus trans fat man. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Look at that. Man, those are okay, these are some cool figures. Thank you so much, Spin Master. Um It's so cool, man. I mean I'm like I'm like 40 years old, but I still think it's cool that like toy companies are willing to send me stuff and let me be a nerd. And uh, I also never question why I live alone. Uh, so that you can enjoy it in all its glory. Just all I mine. Feel you, man. Just all mine. I feel you. More space. I feel you. Huh? My empire of dirt and toys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you and me both. You and yeah. me both. Man, at least you can wear your shoes. I can't like, I can't like tie my toy collection to my feet and go for a walk. <laughs> 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 oh man! But uh, with that, we are actually over time here today, guys, because we were having so much fun. This was really a blast. Like, I, I, uh, you know, I've never been much of a sneakerhead, like I said, just because of my giant feet. But now I'm like drooling over all this stuff and wishing that my feet were smaller. Um, <laughs> man. Should get him a pair of monarchs, man. Get him custom. I would get if I'm getting a pair of monarchs. I'm getting them done up like the Mighty Monarch from Venture Brothers. Oh, like I want. Be oh, cool. that would I be want, awesome. Oh, you know I'll, what? I might be able to get that done for you. All right. I do know. I do. A friend of mine is a customizer, so. 
All right. There we go. You just gave me an idea. Tell me, like, you know, you can tell me what size you want. So we might be able to make that happen. I don't wear Ultras, uh, Squires, but I'm not opposed to... I mean, I really don't know what I'm doing. I mostly just find stuff that fits and buy it. Um, so yeah, I'll, I could use the help. Maybe it sounds like we're going to do a little retail therapy after this, though. Get me some dope-ass Venture Brothers inspired kicks. Hey, um, why not? And uh, if that happens, we'll share it with everybody on the on the stream uh, once we get that done, of course. Um, but hey, um, I'd like to thank our guests. Uh, Censor, where can uh, folks follow you and uh, uh, check out your uh, you're doing you're doing some Smash commentation, right? Oh uh, yes, I am. Oh, uh, so I'll be at Combo Breaker here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Doing, doing Smash, I'll also be doing the mystery game. Mystery games, it's always, it's always a good time. Uh, but for my Twitter, it's at censored says. Uh, my Instagram, censored IG, I thought was kind of wild that I was able to get that name. Okay. And then on Twitch, it's going to be censored streams. Awesome. And then Varian, uh, you've, got, you've got hot sauce. I do. Uh, well, first off, thank you for having me. Really had a good time. Uh, really nice, you know, chatting it up with you guys and stuff. But uh, yeah, like Blake mentioned, I have my own hot sauce brand. It's called Kicks with V Hots. It's like a little combination of my two loves. Uh, if you look at the label, it's also sneaker inspired. Like you know, it's like a Jordan like um, tag box with you know some chucks and the lettering. It everything's inspired. Like even the color. Um, you can get it at kickswithvhots.com. My Instagram is kickswithvhots. Got a little hot honey as well. Everything is uh, small batch made, you know, made with fresh peppers. I ferment the thing. Each batch takes about two and a half months to make, so that's a lot that goes into it. Nice. And I, I, yeah, I like to make sure, you know, I love spicy stuff. I love food. I love flavor. I make sure that my hot sauce is kind of complements food and stuff like that too, so it's not you're not just like going straight for the heat for you know for for heat sake and that's it. Yeah, man, you got like some uh, coffee hot sauce that I bought. I bought oh, yeah. your I bought your uh, your flight your little like flights. Yeah, this this the coffee hot sauce. It's actually made with real coffee. It's habanero based. Goes yeah. great with like red meat, barbecue stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. What is I got thing? some ideas. Variant, we gotta. You and I gotta chit chat. So, I got some so, ideas. Yeah. My flagship habanero basically goes with anything. Uh, if you check out the Instagram account, I try to make like Instagram reels to kind of educate customers of you know what you can use my sauces with. And for the most part, you can use it with any like the regular habanero or the Carolina Reaper, which is what I showcased right here. You can use them even in like pho, uh, ramen, mm, you know, dude. other stuff that you. You know, oh, man, pho, man. I let me tell you, pho is probably the spiciest thing I eat on the regular, man. I go when I go to get pho, I just like take the you know the ketchup bottle full of like chili sauce. Yeah, the sriracha just, bottle. Yeah, just like squeeze out half of that. Then I take the like the chili oil one, like the, yep. the bean one, and like just yeah, like, yeah. like yeah, it's like there's definitely a large thin layer. Of I do that. the same. Yeah. yeah. My broth is always red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Oh my yep, god. Yep. Like volcanic red like pho. So so since you bought the flight, uh, I said try the regular habanero with your pho. Like and, and let me know what you think. Okay, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it the next time. I'll get pho this week, man. I'll let you oh, there we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um And yeah. if you guys want, like I sh should have brought it up with you guys we um you know i can create like a little discount code for anybody that watches this um you know you can start it tomorrow where you know for a week you get like 10 percent off yeah yeah man we'll promote that uh denny we'll get that out there man we can just do promo promo code shack dude there we go all right, S -H -A -C -K. All, right. all right done done it's i'll done. make it happen if i will make it happen if you're listening folks buy some of that hot sauce tomorrow i did you'll love it uh, thank you. yeah. All right. And of course, I'd like to thank my co hosts, Greg Burkleton. Greg, was this an enlightening day for you? I felt like you just got educated mostly today. 
Yeah, I absorbed a lot of information because, like, it's so. It, as a society, we, we collect different things and it's all valuable to certain communities, and it's really interesting to get a peek in that community when you know nothing about it. So, yeah. Kind, so, kind of hope like I was able to answer some of your questions because you asked oh, yeah. really good questions, too. Oh, yeah. That's my job. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank BMO for being the world's most adorable bean and showing up at the end here to get some pets. Oh, look at that. <laughs> He's such a good bean. He's a giant chonkus. Uh, and I love him. Huh, Bimo? Aren't you a giant chonkin bean? You are. Oh, let's just hang out with Bimo. But that reminds me uh, of Shack Fest, which we'll plug in again in just a second. But I also want to thank you, Rod, for being here today and uh, helping put this all together. Uh, and I know that you you have a big passion for uh, sneakers and collecting them. So where can folks check out your, uh, you know, uh, event, your convention. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, my event, I'm on Instagram and, and uh, Twitter at Fly Ass Kicks Expo. Um, I also have a separate Instagram account for, like, merch and stuff I'm getting ready to make here called Fly Ass Kicks Every Day. Um, that's kind of a working project right now. But, yeah, go ahead and uh, follow both of those. Two. You can follow me as well, too, Rodney Conyers Jr. I tweet about all types of stuff that I like. And... Also, I tweet a lot about Shaq News. I happen to work for this cool company, so if you like Shaq News... This one right like, here? Fly Ass Kicks Expo, Expo? Yep, that's me. Done. That's me, yeah. Shoot me a follow. I'll follow everybody back. Uh, yeah, so please do. And yeah, let's uh, let's talk some shop here. Yeah. Uh, I always love to collab, and I always love to you know work with new people. And of course, you can't put Catwoman or Batman on Shaq Pets, but if you have a cat, or hell, maybe you can have a bat. Even you can put them on Shack Pets. Download it <laughs> on your iOS or Android devices today. Take pics of your pets, put them on there, challenge other pics to a cute off, or just look at cute pets, scroll through our latest pet pics. Whatever you feel like doing, Shack Pets, all one word, on your iOS or Android devices. Go download it today. Thank you again to Spin Masters for uh, sending us the Batman toys to check out. You can pick those up at your favorite retail outlet right now. I believe they're available at Target and Walmart uh, and online at Amazon.com. So, yeah, please uh, go grab those. And, of course, uh, just thank you so much for watching. I'm going to bring up the thanks for watching thing here in a minute. But, hey, like us on Facebook. We're Shack News on uh, Twitter. We're Shack News Media on Instagram. Check out those sweet, sweet thirst traps. That we're posting every day <laughs> on the on the Insta. That's our main. That's our main. We are we are horny on main here at Shack News. We don't care who knows it. Um, <laughs> and hey, Greg, I hear that you're working really hard in the video minds every single day to bring us great content on Shack News games and Gamer Hub videos. We've had some cool stuff lately. We even had a, Rod had a really good interview with MK Leo like a few weeks ago that that went up on our Gamer Hub channel. Um, Greg, you've been you you got some really cool exclusive Evil Dead interviews with uh, the composers and the original Evil Dead composers. So that's that's pretty damn awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm filming the showcase tomorrow during the day. So I mean, they sent me a bunch of other stuff. Evil so Dead stuff. Yeah. Ooh, did they send you gifties? Yeah. Oh, I'm so jealous. Of course you. Nice. Of course you get the Evil Dead gifties. Are we gonna get it? Are you gonna about to make me insanely jealous? Is that a Tiki? Oh, like that's a, dope. An evil Ash Tiki, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Nice. Yo, anybody watched uh, um, Multiverse Madness? Not yet. Talking about Evil Dead, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Go yeah. watch it. I, know. I, I watched it with Rod the other night. I still haven't seen the first uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange movie. Yo, what's wrong like, with you, man? So now I'm like, all right, I gotta back. I'm, I'm a DC fanboy. Like all the Marvel cinematic stuff, I'm like, oh, but it's like, but if I always want to go watch a movie, you know, I'll go watch. And I was really happy I went to go see this one because I was like, this, this was, this was yeah. really good. Yeah, great. What do you got in the background there? What are you showing off there? That's Batman and Robin the sideshow statues. Like I'm. Oh, yeah. oh, like, oh like, nice. Like, yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. We'll all we'll, we'll we'll all be back for a Batman episode. I think. I think, it's, <laughs> I think we're just gonna have to have a whole Batman episode, yeah. which I'm totally fine with. I'm so fine with doing a Batman episode, guys. Let's let, let's make it happen <laughs> in the future. Um, 
And if you want to make sure that you don't miss that episode, please give us a follow here on our Twitch channel or a sub. Uh, anything helps. You know, uh, maybe you have Amazon Prime. Don't know what to do with your free Twitch sub. Well, give us Jeff Bezos' money. Like, you've seen what Jeff Bezos does with his money. He makes dick rockets. We're going to... We're going to make great content that for everybody. Like, not just for the cultural elite that will fly to the moon when the Earth is destroyed in the next century. You know? <laughs> like, like stick with us here, the hardworking people at Shaq News. Uh, yeah, and of course, check out ShaqNews.com. Uh, we're making great content there every day. We got a bunch of news stories up. We got reviews, interviews, previews of video game tech. Uh, tech stocks, you know, we're covering it all. You can check it out at shacknews.com and we really hope you do. Uh, once again, thank you to everybody who tuned in today. We really appreciate you uh, hanging with us. And of course, to our guests, Varian and Censored, and my lovely co hosts, Greg and Rod. And with that, we will see you next time. I'm going to thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was a good time.